bitch. Gravy, 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 gang! What is going on, gang? Happy Gravy Day. We're back on our normal Wednesday release schedule. I hope you guys enjoyed our spooky episode with Patrick McClellan last week. It was pretty spooky from what I heard from all of you guys, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. I thought it was very appropriate for uh, for Halloween. We got a fun-filled show today. Um, a lot of times I'll be like, guys, I don't really have anything on the prep sheet. I need some help today. I don't really feel like we need that because our prep sheet is kind of jam packed with just weird shit that we're coming up with. We're going to become a business podcast today. We're going to power rank two separate things in the answer segment. Yeah, that's going to get interesting. And then, uh, we're going to talk about sign stealing that doesn't involve the Astros for once in a very, very long time. So, uh, strap on in it's episode 539 with Pat Alex and robert and um just one thing i wanted to get right into is there's been a big plant fire in houston but the news just says giant plant fire off of 1147 or whatever fm 1147 up in texas whatever respect a plant fire like you need to be more specific when you say it's a plant fire because a tell me that a forest fire is not a giant plant fire i mean Pretty sure Snoop Dogg lights up multiple plant fires a day. That's a plant fire, right? A, like, is it a, like it's an like a a chemical plant? Yeah, be specific. What what kind of plant is it? They probably a don't say plant? chemical plant because they don't want to freak people out thinking that dangerous chemicals are going in the air, which I'm sure they are. But I mean, hell, a cigarette's yeah, that's... a plant fire. Tobacco, right? A plant. But like a forest fire. A forest fire is absolutely a plant fire. So, like, saying, like, large, massive plant fire could also just be the saying, like, forest fire. Could you also call it a it's plant misleading. fire if you if you accidentally light your pubes on fire? Because that's a bush. You could. Yeah, depending on if it was considered a bush at that point in time. But, yeah. Like, like if you're trying to, like, permit and you put, like, I don't know, some, like, hairspray on it to, like, bush it up some more. And then, like, you trip next to a candle. Hypothetically. Right. I didn't do that. Is that where all your hair went? I didn't do that. I told you this is <laughs> hypothetical. It's definitely not where his hair went. Yeah. It's definitely no, not where he's wearing a mouse yamaka today. Well, I mean, I wasn't even going to address it, but yeah. I, your buddy gets you Mickey Mouse ears. We don't have at, to address it. At Disneyland, you, you wear your Mickey Mouse ears. I just It doesn't really fit my head. From the side, it looks like an old, like, World War II helmet. Like, you know, it kind of just sits weirdly high. Like, 70% yeah. of my forehead is exposed. Like, if I put it flat, it's definitely a yarmulke. Like, it sits way back there. Which I bet Walt Disney would have been pretty conflicted seeing. Dude, did you know that Walt Disney had all, like, they photoshopped out all the cigarettes and all the pictures that he had, because like he always was smoking cigarettes. And there's all these pictures. If you just go Google Walt Disney, like at Disney World, there's all these pictures of him, and like he's got like a V, like he's holding his hand. Like go, just like I'm t- like as you're listening to this, go Google Walt Disney Disney World, like in Disney World. And there's so many pictures of him. Like you will never see a cigarette in his hand because they made sure that they like scrubbed all of the cigarettes out of his photos because I think he. I, he died maybe of cancer from smoking, I want to say. But like when it became I'm like, yeah, that's bad. We don't do that. Like there's so many photos where like he's like got like a like a little gap in his fingers because he's smoking a cigarette or he's like talking to somebody and he's got his hand weird, just kind of like weirdly out. Like there's so many of those that um they they've done where you can like they covered up like just about all of it, but like you can't cover up that like obviously he was holding something if you really know what to look for. Like every single Walt Disney photo pretty much has him fake holding a cigarette that has been photoshopped out. You're seeing it now, aren't you, Pat? Yeah, the first one I I saw was uh, he was reading Alice in Wonderland to a little doll of, uh, I guess, Donald Duck. And his that one, the pointer finger is just arched up like that. And you're yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And he'll always be Which, having that conversations sense, like though. just sort of holding it. Dude, it was what? When were these pictures taking place? The 40s, 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s, probably? Know, yeah, time. everybody smoked cigarettes back then. That's just what you did. You weren't eating or drinking. You were smoking. And actually, while you're drinking, you're smoking. 
everybody smoked cigarettes back. It wasn't until like 15 years ago that not everybody fucking smoked. Yeah. And then it really just was like, like okay, this is bad. Like it used to be like they would tell pregnant women like, well, you know, you're struggling with pregnancy. Just, you know, smoke a little bit. It'll calm you down. And while you're pregnant, just cut back to like two a day. Yeah. Don't do a whole pack. Don't smoke light cigarettes. Doctors used to recommend specific brands. Parliament only. Paul Malls. Mar- That's brand. Marlboro's. Camel. Virginia baby. Slims. Joe Camel with that fucking jacket. He was so cool. Yeah. And I'll say this. Never made me want to smoke a cigarette as a kid. I would, I would just be like, oh, that's Joe Camel. He's cool. But I didn't want cigarettes. Probably because my parents. I didn't really smoke, want them. But... I didn't really want them. Mine didn't either. But like still to this day, like smoking a cigarette looks cool. And like. They can say it's like, do you think it makes you look cool? Yeah, I do think it makes you look it, cool. It definitely you does. You have a leather jacket and you light up a cigarette. Like, you look cool as fuck. It doesn't Alex, make you cool, but you look cool in that moment. Let me All ask right? you a question. It's bad for you. Don't do it, kids. Don't don't smoke cigarettes, kids. But, like, you can't tell me, like, leaning up. Like, was it fucking James Dean? He had the leather jacket. He's up against, like, the, the light post and he's lighting a cigarette. And you're like, fuck it. What a badass. What was a badass. What was the coolest candy growing up? It was the candy cigarettes. Candy cigarettes. Did they make you want to smoke cigarettes? Cigarettes. A little bit, but not really. No, I see. They didn't make me want to, but you know what? I I I got them for two reasons. One, they were delicious. Two, looked cool as fuck. Bring back it. Business idea. We're gonna be the guys to do it. We're gonna bring back uh, candy cigarettes. Kids can make their own fucking choices. Oh, hey, we got rid of candy cigarettes. Now kids won't smoke anymore. Yeah, but you've got blueberry bubblegum asshole flavored fucking vapes every two seconds that every kid is smoking. That's bad now too, though. Now they're like, vapes are bad for you. It's just probably less bad than cigarettes. I I guarantee you more kids smoke vapes. More kids smoke vapes than smoked cigarettes 30 years ago. I guarantee you that. I would say about the same, probably. I feel like everybody smokes. No, no way. It's way more. It's way, I'm, I'm talking about kids smoking them, though. Because if you smoke cigarettes as a kid, it left a stench on you. It left a stench. Your, your parents could grab your finger. Your parents ever do that to you? Maybe they thought you were smoking weed or cigarettes. They grab your hand like, let me smell your fingertips. You doping? Yeah. Guess yeah. what? Vapes can't do that. So I guarantee you more kids are smoking because they're like, well, I can't get caught unless they physically find the vape. Smells like Stroop waffles. Like what? What does that even mean? Why? What, what kind of flavor is that? It's like I just want to, just want to get high, man. I just want to get a buzz. I smell that purple Barney Kush on you. Like fuck, you know your shit. It's exactly what I smoked. You smell like bubble gum. I haven't bought you bubble gum in six years. Who's your dealer? I smell that Northern Lights, motherfucker. But speaking of business ideas, though, Pat. Look into bringing candy cigarettes back, Robert. We can make our own little version of candy cigarettes. Um, this is a business podcast from now on. So um, friend of the show, our girl Glamour, is uh, she's running like a business class or works at the business class. Um, but she was telling me she could get some more business people to listen to us if we had a business segment on the show. And instead of creating a business segment, I know Robert loves it when we add new segments to the show because that just is more time that we're going to waste. Instead of adding... A new segment. We're just gonna make the pre-com segment our business segment. So, the rule on today's pre-com segment is: if you bring up something, you also have to have a business idea from it. And what we're trying to teach you guys, you you blossoming business students, business years, uh, entrepreneurs, whatever it is, we're trying to teach you that any idea is a business idea. Any idea is a business idea. Whether or not it's a good business idea, that's up for debate. You know, it's kind of like ladles. It's kind of like the the you know, the humble ladle, anything you put a handle on becomes a ladle. It's just depending on like whether or not it's a good ladle or not. So any idea that we think of is a business idea. We're just gonna have to find a way to get it to being a business idea. And then we can assess from there if it's a good business idea. Um, One of the business ideas that I had was um, the fact that I've noticed that those Stanley cups, mostly for women are like the new Yetis. Like Stanley's are like the female version of Yetis, I feel like. And I, don't get I think them. TikTok's just, doing it but they're just giant they're just giant cups right they're giant metal cups that keep things cold 
We already had Yetis, then we had Arctics, then we had a bunch of different offshoots of that. We just need to be the Arctic of Stanley. So we need to make basically the exact same cup, cheaper, not as good, but seems like it's as good. We'll call them gravies with an I, like Yeti, Yeti font, but just as gravies. And then we just market them to those same people that like want to buy a Stanley cup, but they're a billion dollars. So it's not a billion dollars. Like our price point is slightly less than that. What if we go every man, Stanley? What if we, and I think here's what we call them. We call them Tates and we're making cups for men now. But what we do is it's just, (laughs) it's just, it's just a fucking cup. There's no metal. There's no lining. It's not, what you think you're you're so fucking soft you need your your water to be cold out in the wild Who are you, you pussy? Have cold water you fucking pussy you pussy Here, you have a can't cup. drink water fast enough put your water in a cup and drink it like a man no ice ice is for the soft you're not soft men don't do that women do that women do that because they're in the kitchen over the hot stove you're a man you're out in the world just drink your water out of a cup and then it's just like that's the commercial and then it just says tates Cups I for men. Hate that. Right? Okay, I gotta take this fucking mouse hat off. It's fucking up my entire world. But yeah, dude, what if we do that? Like like you said, all all the, the Stanley Cups, which by the way, how the fuck is the NHL not come after them for that? Um, I thought the same thing. But they're it's women. There's like seven women that I work with that have them. I haven't seen a single guy with it. Let's make tapes. It's on TikTok. And it's like, I think TikTok is obviously in bed with with Stanley because they're like, got me another one. And it's like, they'll show like their like fleet of Stanleys. And it's like, do you need 13 fucking cups that are the same size, but all 64 ounces? Like, what are you, how much coffee do you need to drink? We got, we, oh, we, can, we can do, you know how you see those bullshit commercials of, of uh, Joe Rogan just shelling out products that he would never fucking touch? Like you'll get yeah. an Instagram ad and show. We just do it with Andrew T- and like we get David Goggins too. We're gonna. I feel like he's game. one of the yeah deep fakes, and we just do Gary our take, take cups. Everybody loves Gary Gary Vaynerchuk. Imagine if your whole family was dead. Okay, now drink water out of our cup. Now drink water out of this. Don't be a fucking pussy. You're like, all right. We can just do styrofoam success. cups. Let's do styrofoam. Oh. Cups. Oh like, no, we just hit, we Houston just hit style those... was stacked two styrofoams, like so, like like the scissor cups, and then that's no, because that'll keep it we cold. Just scratch our logo. That's soft. That's soft. We don't do that at Tate's. No, we just have the fucking cups that were in every gas station and everywhere in the nineties with that fucking blue background with the red zigzag over it. That looks like it's from you know what design I'm talking. About. Fuck Jerry, well, basically stole zigzag. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the official cup of Tate's. And styrofoam they, cups, pretty much. They, they fucking biodegrade slow as fuck. Fuck the environment. And there's right. a single use. Global warming isn't real. Guys are just walking <laughs> around with sleeves. Like they're carrying sleeves like it's a rifle. Sleeves of cups. And they just like go to a water fountain, get it, drink it, crush it, and then just like throw it. Not in Texas, though. You don't throw it on the ground in Texas. You don't mess with Texas. You other states, Texas. fuck the other states. Nobody gives a shit. None of those other states Oklahoma, mean throw it all over the ground there. Oh, fuck yeah. It. They love trash up there. It's what they are. They love it. Dallas, you can trash there. We don't fucking Tate, care because it's already trash. Tate sleeves. That's my business idea. Tate sleeves. That would be what, like, what do you need water for? I don't, I always just wonder, like, how long are you planning on leaving that that cup there and being like, like if I left a, a glass of water overnight and I wake up and it's not cold, I'm not like, well, well, it needs to be cold. I don't understand the person like, well, I needed it three days ago. I left here three days ago when it's not still cold with ice in it. It doesn't need to be, man. You know what ice says? It melts. It's fine. Just go get more ice. You'll be able- I've had a cup of water that was next to my bed probably for like two weeks now. And I sipped out of it this morning. It was fine. And there was a uh, when there was California wildfires or California plant fires, if I may. Uh, when that was happening earlier this year, I remember there was like a big like video that somebody put out. They're like, "I had my Yeti in my truck, and my truck was burned. This is what I have left of my Yeti, and look, it's still got ice in it." And I was like, "One, I don't really believe this video, but two, you gonna drink it now, fucking pussy? 
You need your you need your cold water. You need my little ice water. Also, it was in your truck, man. Drink it faster. It was in the truck that got burned, but he was able to get it out. And I was like, I don't know how that works. No, here's my question, though. You had a truck. You evacuated. You got away from the wildfires, probably in a vehicle. You had a truck. Oh, but the roads were blocked up. You're in a truck. Go off roading. Get your fucking probably 70, $80,000 vehicle out of there. Don't let it just burn to shit. God, California sucks. Wasn't a Fred Hass Nissan. I'll tell you that much. Nice little plug right there. I go to my friends at Fred Hass Nissan 24202, Tomball Parkway. Tell them Alex P. sent you. I almost shouted out where I got my car, and I was like, wait a minute, they don't pay me shit. <laughs> they don't pay shit. <laughs> no, I pay them pay. every fucking month, and I'm tired of doing it. Get them to sponsor the pod. I actually had a thought the other day. I was like, man, what if I just like traded in my car and for whatever it's worth for another car of equal value and I just didn't have car payments. I was like, oh, then I'd probably be driving around an old ass car with like 110,000 miles on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then something would happen to it and you're like, fuck, I wish I had a new car. Yeah. Fuck. Why did I give away my <laughs> brand new fucking car? That's like a reason I'm like not buying a new car right now. I'm like, I just don't want those payments. I, I do not want that to happen. But yeah, so that's a business idea right there. We There's one business idea done. Uh, other business idea I had, well, thing I was going to mention, we'll have a business idea out of it. I uh, was in Mexico for my brother's wedding last week, and Em and I were walking on the beach, not to be like a more romantic, whatever. We were walking on the beach, Aww. and I saw something jumping up and down in the water, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Mexican we go jumping close to this pier, it was a fucking dolphin, and they have this dolphin in like a clo- enclosed pier, so it's like, it can see the the ocean, but it can't get to the ocean, and then I was just like, fucking pussy dolphin just like jump over the fucking pier dude it's not that big you're free you're freaking it's really sad being like these like it's doing all the treat the tricks for like these fucking fish people could swim with the dolphins and i was like that's awesome but like it's really sad that like they can see their friends they just couldn't go be with their friends because they're like stuck in this like pier that's sectioned off from the ocean and i was like business idea from that what if we just trained a bunch of dolphins to just keep coming back to shore and like we'll pay them in fish, but they just gotta swim with people every now. Like I mean, duh. that's what they do. A, do you, when you see a dog main just, dolphin swimming, duh. when you when you see a dog just hanging out in its front yard, are you like stupid dog? Why don't you just jump over the fence and run away? No, it, that dolphin knows it doesn't want to. Ju- it could jump away. If it wanted to, but it's like, dude, they feed me and they bring me. American tourists with fat asses that I can occasionally hump. That dolphin's got a sweet yeah, fucking life, dude. It was small, dude. It wasn't that. It can't be that great. Can't be that great. And how do you know it doesn't jump, jump away and then come back? So, oh, dude, it's fucking that'd be a six in the morning. Six, I gotta go get some fish. Well, I wanted to help, but then it was like seventy five dollars to like do anything with those dolphins. I was like, yeah, not happening. Or a Plus, million pesos. It's Mexico. Maybe they give the dolphins cocaine. A little booger sugar. They could. A little, they could. A little Mexican know? candy, if I may. Maybe when they come up to the surface, they, you know, light up a little plant, plant fire, blow it into their blowhole. The dolphin's like, you know what? This is a pretty chill over here. Co- it is coquino and mota. Isn't it cocaina? I learned cocaine. It's like, fuck, I'm not great at Spanish, dude. I was there for like four days. All right, I didn't learn it all. Yo necesito drogas. That means uh hey, how you doing? Drogas is a cool word. Drogas. It sounds like a dragon from Game of Thrones. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> sounds like where's the dragon? I was like, I don't know. What what That's did she say? It's a terrifying question to ask me, actually. Dracaris is when she like tells them breathe fire. Whatever. She was like, Drogas. And they would just like <laughs> go fly to a fucking weed farm, pick up some weed for her. it. <laughs> Or torture sure. a, a rival, a rival's weed farm. But yeah, we should have like just humane dolphins that like swim back. We're like, yo, dude, we'll pay you in fish. Here's your uh, here's your salary. And then we get paid for them to swim with people. But then see y'all later. Go back to the ocean. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck with that. But Alex, what if they don't come back? That's the I get that that's an issue. We'll just find some really chill dolphins that will come back because we'll give them so many fish. They're like, all right, cool. And also, I've recruited more fin- more friends, fins, as if I may. Um, I've recu- recruited more fins. They'd also like to swim with the people. And I'm like, good, that's more money for me. 
I mean, that's basically you're just incorporating dolphins into the job market. Like, if they show up, we'll pay you. But if you don't show up, we'll find more dolphins and pay them. So, you, right. Pretty soon you're going to want them to create a whole get ecosystem. social security go, uh, cards and everything. You're trying to become well, big government here, man. Problem. That's the ocean's problem. That's not my problem. And once, when they unionize, then that's when we put them back in the pier thing. And we're like, all right, y'all, y'all can't unionize. We don't, we don't do that. Oh, yeah, dude. When they unionize, we call Japan. That's a problem. Union union dolphins are bad. Um, what else did I have? Um, this is a business idea I had to, to solve all the world's problems because it's mall Santa season now, I feel like. Um, this is a hot button issue, but we're going to bring peace to the Middle East with this because I don't know about you guys, but my feed is um, – So I thought Palestine was bad initially, but now Palestine's good. Hamas is bad, Palestine good. Israel good. Palestine, good. Hamas, bad. That's what I'm getting, sort of. But everybody's like, free this one, free this one. You're going to get what some hate for that one. About to. About to. I don't understand <laughs> it. So you can't get mad at me for not understanding things, all right? Ignorance is bliss. And this is my idea, is that we just have, we have two mall Santas. <laughs> one is a Palestinian mall Santa. The other is an Israeli mall Santa. And... You have to pay to get neither line to have your kid's picture taken, and we just donate to the free Palestine fund and the free Israel fund. And it's like, there you go. Now we donate to both sides. We're, my hands are wiped clean because I helped both sides. I'm not guilty of anything. Playing both sides, so no matter who wins, I was on that side. So is the, uh, I'm guessing the Israeli Santa, he's wearing blue instead of red, and his hat's no, a little Santa's. smaller. They look exactly old. like they're just wearing the same Santa suit. There's no real differentiation except for one is like pro-Palestine Santa. The other one is pro-Israel Santa. They're not allowed to fight. Not allowed to fight. You're not allowed to do anything bad to these Santas, all right? There's rules. Yeah, I mean, that, that, a, historically that works is, when we're like, hey, Israel and Palestine, stop fighting. You guys aren't allowed to fight. They, they listen. That's honestly been my biggest take on it. It's like, what if like we all just chilled out, guys? Huh? What if we were just like, hey, guys, stop killing each other. We'll fucking give you candy. I don't know. Presents. That's what Santa does. I was still on cigarettes, candy cigarettes. Um, I don't know how effective that's going to be. Also, I don't think we need to send them money. United States sends Israel plenty and Saudi Arabia and the rest of the Muslim world pretty much takes care of Palestine. I don't think our uh, $87 and change that we're going to rack up. It's going to work. But think of the joy in the kids' faces, and those kids need joy now more than ever in this holiday season. So, like, that's my business idea to solve peace, to bring peace to the Middle East, where it's like, here's $81. Definitely don't use it to keep warring with each other. Use it to just... <laughs> we, we use it to buy them presents. Like, here's an Xbox. You can play what? games on it. Here's here's the television and a subscription to NFL Sunday Ticket. Watch football instead, and they don't understand football. Can you imagine? Like maybe that's the key. That's the key. Israel and Palestine probably wouldn't be fighting if they had Sunday Ticket. You're I mean, telling it can't me hurt. we go to the border. We go to the fucking border of Israel and Palestine, and we throw on fucking an octo box on a Sunday afternoon, and we're like, fellas and ladies, respectfully. Check out this big fucking jumbotron of just football. Like they would all be like, "This is amazing!" We're like in Sunday ceasefire, ceasefire Sundays. That's what Sundays are for, ceasefires. And if that doesn't work, we'll send over hummus flavored candy cigarettes. Again, because yeah, we bring peace to the Middle East. I'm pretty sure we can solve like all global politics by just being like, "But look at football," because like they don't. No one besides us has that. Canada, yours doesn't count, all right? We're starting to give it to right London now. and Germany. Here's my thing, though. I don't think they appreciate it enough. They're not claiming for more. They're still hanging on to their stupid sports. But, I see, that's – you know what? I think that's just it. Like, I know they have soccer, but, like, do they? I don't think there's enough sports in the Middle East. That's the problem. And I know they're bad guys, but the Saudi fund – that's who'd they get Ronaldo they're at least trying to bring soccer they're trying to bring sports but they need better great, sports. great point 
These guys have been warring and literally getting their hands on rocket launchers and firing them. And your solution to end that is, hey, instead of firing fucking giant balls of explosives out of your bare hands, watch this guy kick a ball around gr- grass and maybe score once over 90 minutes. No, we got to send him football. You're right. Exactly. We got to exactly. we got to yeah. send Red Zone. We got to send like Sean Kemp and them over there just yamming dunks down. You know what we need? You know what we need? The next Olympics, we got to do it in the Middle East. We got to do it there because we send the dream team over there. Let them fuck all their women like we did in Europe in 92. All of a sudden, they got a bunch of great basketball players. Basketball gets huge in the region. 20 years later, less war. Wasn't there a bunch of wars going on in in Europe in the 90s, in the early 90s? Probably. Yeah, I don't hear any. I don't hear any European wars right now. I don't hear about that either. Yeah, great point. And how did we do it? All great points. We sent Magic Johnson over there to fuck their women. Well, those pre-AIDS Magic Johnson, right? Well, yeah. Okay, so Magic, no, Magic like, had AIDS. Seems like literally anybody we, we else would have been Magic. a better. Literally anybody else would have been a better Bird in that situation. Yeah, Larry Mullins. Bird, Christian Leitner. Yeah. We, we fucked some fundamentals Michael in Jordan. that continent. Not that there's anything wrong with my, with Magic Johnson. I'm just saying, probably don't use him as like they'll have sex with all of your women. Yeah, and, and it's a it's and a fast. That's what's a very getting. pilgrim and Indians kind of thing. I feel like we send them basketball. Thirty years later, we no, send no. them football. Yeah, football. We got it because football is going to really no. Football's a more expensive solve, sport to play it. though. Basketball, you just need two fucking hoops. We got to send right. them basketball first, then we give them football thirty years later. We we leave them wanting football. Yeah, it's really what it is. You just muted. Like, dude, no, it's it's all day. It's all I was coughing. It's all day on Sundays, and then also for like four hours on Monday nights, and then on Thursday nights too. And then don't we? Have I told you about college football? And they're like, what? What? It's like, yeah, no, it's like five days a week. You can basically do this just whenever. Like, it's just an excuse to just watch this game. And they're like, this is fucking sick. Plus, like, like why don't you, like who who even has time for work? Like, Pat, think about your, like, our routine. Like, Pat and I have been on a real good, like, string of just fucking, like, broing out, I feel like, over the last week, where it's, like, sending each other bets, like, hopping on each other's bets. We're Fortnite gaming. We're linking up on that. We're talking talking football. You don't have time to talk about war. You and I haven't had any time until now. This is the podcast. This is where we're covering the hard-hitting topics. But, like, you and I wouldn't have time to even think about war. In our daily lives right now, because we're too busy Nine. like trying to win bets, trying to make money, trying to watch our boys like wa- like watch our football team win, which won't happen ever again for my team, I think ever maybe, but for Pat's team, it did happen on Sunday. Yeah, it was fucking real ugly. Um, yeah, that's what they, they just they need sports. Sports keep keep kids off the streets, and kids that aren't on the streets aren't firing rocket launchers randomly into the air. Facts. If you're placing a bet, you're not shooting an RPG. That's fact. Can't fact. bring RPGs into sports books. You have time. You're not allowed. Not allowed. I think we solved the Middle Eastern crisis. We just got to give them sports. We, I, we did. We're when, welcome, when, world. Like, And yeah, you know what? A couple times when they play each other, there's going to be some fans that get killed. I mean, it. it ha- I mean, look at the look it's at the LA Dodgers. Rivalry. Look at the LA called Dodgers. The rivalry. Dodgers fans kill like one fan every five years, still, and we've had sports for fucking over a hundred years. It's gonna pop up from time to time, but you know what? The rivalry a few will, bad also, apples. will also bring you closer because guess what else happens in rivalries? You're sitting side by side with the with the fan of the other team. Something happens on the field, you both laugh. Oh, look, common ground. Hey, you know what? I right? see where you're coming from. You see where I'm coming from. We're both just enjoying the sport, baby. I fucking hate you because of the fans of the team you root for, but you know what? I respect your fandom. Give us a fucking jumbotron at the border of Israel and Gaza and give us a hundred percent of access to what goes on on it and like just run red zone, some sort of football, college or NFL, and then in between those being on, we'll just run reruns of Jackass. And like I guarantee you, no one has a problem with that. How can you be at war when you're watching guys get punched in the nuts? 
when you're watching just like like jackass unites the world jackass like n- everybody thinks that's funny everybody universally and like football, as a child the rest of the time that's is funny and yeah. and you know what i think we play for them you we need a language the for old laughing. uh the old opening for nhl hits games back in the day when it was just john lynch straight up murdering guys on the field So yeah, there's uh, us solving the Middle Eastern crisis. Tell us you're a business person without realizing that we just businessed the war away. And then, well, how are we going to get our missile money? And how are we going to get Boeing and all those people their money? Uh, I don't know. Show them how to make fucking jumbotrons. All the groups that are funding over. these wars, they will buy franchises and start sports teams instead. Spending money on the real things that matter. Important things. Again, and then eventually, then eventually, imagine, yeah. Then they find out about esports, and they can do their own sports right there. Yeah, it's great. You got no, you got no time to to go out and war when you're fucking practicing ten hours a day inside on your fucking TV. Less war, more football, more jackass. Problem solved. I, I mean, I, I done. It's just a scary Jack- thought, but we need to go into politics, man. The world needs. I, us. I mean, I, as a politician, I we we will talk about politics here in the comeback kids segment. But um, yeah, I I'm just saying we're disruptors in the political space, and I think that's what scares a lot of people. Like we are disruptive forces, and that's what the like you know the mainstream political parties they don't want that. They need outsiders like us, the disruptors in society, to go out there and tell people like. Just watch Red Zone instead of fighting wars. And people will be like, you're right. That's a better idea. That's a way more fun, Alex. I mean, we got we got to clear out the swamp. Less. We got to clear out the swamp because Florida's program has not been what they should be lately. They're really bringing down the SEC. We're going to bring the swamp back. We're going to get rid of the swamp, and then we're going to bring the swamp back. Right. I mean, because as, as a Giants fan for my whole life, I can say I've thought about it a lot, but like I will still say that like I would rather watch the Giants lose a game and lose their franchise quarterback and just like just have the worst season ever than die in war. I would rather watch that. So like, you know, when you're looking at it that way, yeah. So but watching and football then, is much better than war. Yeah. And, and and then you get to have fun with the way it used to be in the bad blood between it. Like the Georgia, Georgia tech game, you know what that's called? Clean old fashioned hate. Like, yeah. Fucking used to hate each other. Now, yay. It's a, it's the name of a football game. You know what? Fucking Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. It was called Bedlam. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, a hundred years from now, when Israel State plays Palestine University, it's going to be called, like, Jihad on the Gridiron. The Holy War. Like that. The Holy War. It'll be the, the Holy, Holy War. War. That's it. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that already a football game over here? They, they can have that one, too. They can have that one, too. You know what? We'll give them that. If it brings peace to the Middle East, they can have that name. That's how big of a man I am, to let them have that that name. Israel runs the airstrike offense and Palestine State's quarterback. They call him the missile launcher. Yep. I fucking love this. Yeah, BYU and Utah with the Holy War. I thought that's what it was, but I was like, but they're the same... <laughs> Same religion. That's not a war. Right, right. So there's us bringing peace in the Middle East. I mean, 33 minutes in, we've already solved all the world's problems. So uh, just strap in. This is all extra. This is all on us, all uh, right? We're not even going to charge You're welcome. What Bye. you guys got? Well, I mean, I had Tate's Cups. Tate's Cups, yeah. That's I have our good. own uh, our own business. We uh, Holidays are coming up. Maybe a certain spectacular is also coming up. Maybe we got some merch related to that. Maybe coming out next week. Yeah, we do. Did we pick a shirt yet? Not yet, but we will. I got an idea for Robert. Robert it's which, gonna be pod. Which podcast one did you like? Editing the most? software that just uh, uh, deletes all uh, white male voices, so Robert only has like thirty seconds of podcast to edit. What great. do you think about that idea? That's yeah, there you go. Good. <laughs> Pretty short podcast. But yeah, but we think, got some merch, merch coming out soon. Yeah, we were looking at some uh, some potential shirt designs. 
and just hear this. You know what? It's a crazy idea. This is a good business idea, guys. Um, because just spiling off of that, it's got to have a business idea. I'm going to give you one in case you didn't have another one with it. But go buy this past the gravy shirt, the, the 10th anniversary shirt when it comes out. Good business idea. Have a shirt for a specific event that will show up before the event and not six months later. Because that was a bad business idea from our previous shirt suppliers mm -hmm. when we got the 300th episode shirts and stickers months after that event had already happened. You're like, oh, fuck, I forgot I, I even ordered that. Um, so these will have 10th anniversary spooktacular shirts. They will be available for sale. You want to say next week? Yeah, definitely by next week. By next week, oh, uh, passagreevymerch.com. And uh, they'll be available for sale then. You'll get them there. You can wear them to the spooktacular. Are we bringing Christmas sweaters back? Can we do that? I may have one design in the works. And then we can bring back old ones. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas sweaters in the store next week? Yes. Next week? Yes. Okay. Next week. This is just us planning next week's sale. Fire sale. <laughs> that may just be at full price. But availability in the store. We've got a new store. We're rolling out new things that may have been old things, but they're coming back. The PTG ugly Christmas sweaters and the tenth annual spooktacular. Like, when are you ever gonna get to go to a tenth annual spooktacular ever again? Probably never gonna happen again. Never pass gravy, unless mm -hmm. somebody else not a, steals not, our podcast. Not a Christmas spooktacular. Definitely Nobody does not. Christmas spooktacular like we do. Nobody does. Ten years strong, baby. Passgravymerch dot com. Solid business idea, Robert. Solid business idea. Is that the Pre camp segment, then that is hey. shout out to all the business students. There you go. That's that's what you call business, fam. It's called business. We're just solving problems. Every idea is a business idea. We just had all those, <clears throat> all those are great ideas. It was the hardest homework they ever had to do was sitting through that thinking, what was the best homework? <laughs> like, that's homework. Was well, that yeah, idiots? I didn't mean hardest. geniuses. I didn't mean the hardest Solve as in bad, real, real problems, like the best things you have to work for like it's it's hard because it's good you know what i mean like it challenges you so it's difficult i wasn't saying it was bad god have some confidence in yourself alex you little bitch <laughs> the fuck is going on all right so uh, this is a weird start to a podcast uh uh you know uh i don't know how to transform little or little bitch. Oh, you know, you know what else is little and not a little bitch? Little M Shop. Why don't you tell them about that, Alex? Nailed it. Well, we wanted to give a shout out. I thought you were going to give a shout out to somebody. Oh, fuck. I thought you meant it the other day. Yeah. Shout out, Raphael. Uh, I don't remember what day it was now, but last week, dude called me at work to tell me how much he loved the podcast, Raphael. I hope you're, I think he says he listens while he's doing deliveries. Maybe you're doing deliveries right now. Hopefully you didn't crash because you were Fuck laughing yeah, so hard at the beginning because how funny we are. But, uh, yeah, shout out you, Raphael. Tell Donatello, Michelangelo, and Leonardo. I said, what's up, too? There you go. Dude, Raphael, we love you, dude. And people, I, I love people you, buddy. Like, I don't want to like always tell you guys. If you ever tell us we love the, that you love the podcast, we're never going to get annoyed. Never, ever. Be like, dude, love the show. Love the pod. Love the pod. Never going to be annoyed. Annoying. You guys are the best. We appreciate every single one of you guys for listening yeah. or watching or interacting with us at all. Gravy gang, best gang out there. Best gang out there. You know what the best air freshers are out there? Little M Shop. Because you go to littlemshop.com, you spend $10 or more, you're going to get free shipping on anything at littlemshop.com. You don't want to drive around with those baby back bitch. I know Raphael ain't driving around with those baby bitch, but baby back bitch fucking little green tree air fresheners. Raphael's probably got a little M air freshener on his rear view mirror because he doesn't want to have his fucking car smelling like shit with whatever dumb scent they have on the stupid trees. And they actually have to chop down like 12 trees per air freshener. Don't look that up. But that's what they have to do. It's actually more Assholes. like they, they're tearing up the environment while little M shop, they don't necessarily plant trees that, that we throw bird seed in every order that you you place so like that sort of they probably grow into plants somewhat so we're actually just throwing helping seed the earth, all over the place throwing seed we'll throw some seed out there which is giving back to the earth whereas the green trees they're just fucking taken away from the earth so be a part of the solution not a part of the problem all right guys little mshop.com they got the best air freshers in the game use our promo code ptg69 at checkout you're gonna get 10 percent off of your order at little mshop.com they got keychains you can customize as well 
little hotel hotel style keychains. You can get customized ones. You can get other ones that are already pre-made as well. Um, but get the fresh to death is probably my favorite. You can't really go wrong with any of them. Fresh to death, little ice in Miami Beach. They all have cool designs. They're all gonna make people be like. Why does your car smell so great? You're like, oh, that's a little air freshener right there. My little hack, I always tell you guys, uh, we got we to gotta change it out, actually. Ours is, uh, it's been months since we changed it out. But uh, you, you take the bag out of your trash can. You throw a little air freshener in there. Then every time you pull the bag out, I got crawfish every Sunday. So it's like got that crawfish juice the next day. And you're like, mm, that doesn't smell great. But I pull that out. Trash can doesn't smell like that because it's got a little bit of freshener right there. So it smells nice and fresh when I put that new bag back there. That's my little hack for you. But they also work anywhere else. They long last and they're the best. Little M Air Fresheners, littlemshop.com, littleemshop.com. The best place online for any kind of tchotchkes you could ever want. Promo code PTG69. Get 10% off your order. You're going to get free shipping on orders of $10 or more. Littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com. Go follow them on Twitter at littleemtweets. On Instagram at little em shop, let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast. Little shop.com, promo code PTG69 at checkout for 10% off your order at little em shop.com, little em shop.com, the official sponsor of the Comeback Kids segment. It's the Comeback Kid, the Comeback Kid of the Week, the Comeback Kid of the Week, bitch. I just bought some candy cigarettes off Amazon. <laughs> Best eleven dollars and seventy cents I've ever spent. I was about to say how much were they? I might order some too. Twenty four. Like, Why are people buying candy cigarettes now? Uh, because they're fucking awesome. I just wish I had bought them three weeks ago so I could have handed out candy cigarettes for Halloween. That would have been awesome. And then every now and then a real cigarette, just to mix it up, just spice it up. No, you know, I'm not trying to, don't get me wrong. I got no problem with doing illegal shit. Like, you know, fuck the government and all that shit. But like supplying illegal substances to minors, not really the kind of illegal shit I'm into. You know, I don't really fuck with minors. The other day I had a thought like, uh, my sister had her friend's uh, daughters over. She's doing like a big bake sale over at Chewy's and she was having them help her decorate cookies. I don't know why it popped in my head if one of them was like, uh, could you buy me like a vape or so? I was just like, I don't know why the random question, if they popped my head now, I would have been like, yeah. And then I thought, I was like, oh, wait, you have to be 21 now. That's a law I would break. I would totally, like, if an 18, 19-year-old kid was like, dude, can you buy me some cigarettes? I'd be like, fuck yes, I can. How dare the government tell you... opposite. No, fuck that. Like, booze? I ain't buying you booze. That's a long-standing one. I don't think you should be able to tell somebody that can legally vote and go to war, nah, dude, you can't have a cigarette. Right, I think that. So, so for three years... I'm not going to go to jail for that. Three years, these kids are supposed to be able to make informed decisions about life and die in war. But they can't fucking relax. I think no, you no, can no. drink I think they and smoke drink. on any military base, though. So like, I'm pretty sure you can if you're 18 on any, any military base. So I don't think that that law applies then. So, yeah, you want to play that? Members. Yeah, I'm you like, can go serve. You hey, you're serve, 19 years old. You, you got to get a job and you got bills. But you better not catch a buzz. That's bullshit. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I'm just not going to get ticketed or go to jail for it. But when I think back to that, like all the times that we underage got booze by like, hey, mistering some dude at a gas station. And that guy said, yes. And then like they were t- like most of the times, like 90% of the time, they'd be like, no, I'm not doing that. And you're like, what a fucking asshole. It's like, no, that's just like a normal, regular person that probably should have said no to us because it's illegal. And now, like, if a group of kids did that, like, I remember I was at a music festival and this kid was like, hey, dude, here you go. I want to get two Bud Lights. Can you get them for me? And I was like, fuck no. Get the fuck away from me. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. And then be the guy who gets kicked out because I gave fucking booze to underage kids. I don't want to be that guy. Not to mention. A scumbag move. Kids probably a fed, you know? Cops send kids, which, by the way, I don't know how it's not entrapment. They'll like have kids ask adults to buy them beer when they do it. They're like, oh, uh, you're arrested. Like, that's literally entrapment. I wasn't going to commit this crime until you asked me to commit this crime. 
It's like the hookers thing. It's like, yeah, well, you solicited him too. He didn't just solicit you. He, you were like, yeah, hey, you want to uh, for this? And you know, then he I was, was like, I wasn't right. looking for a blowjob. But if like, somebody stops now me you're and says, arrested. yeah, some lady stops me and goes, hey, you want a blowjob? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I could go for one. Most dudes aren't. Yeah, yeah. Most dudes would say yes to that at any time. A lot, most I would say would probably not pay for it, but like if you offer it and they're like, okay, whatever, like that should just be an exchange of goods and services. Well, we're talking, yeah, I mean, as long as everybody is of age and consent, depends on the price. And if you're in a this slump, is in a weird spot, we don't need to get into <laughs> How the fuck did we get here? See, this is know. what this happens is, when we you let me start talk. Come back, kid. Well, sometimes I gotta let Pat cook, you know. Um, first comeback kid this week is voting and politics. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know I was running for mayor. Uh, did not win. Did not win. But my I, I did run for mayor. Thirty six dollars to register. Apparently, you got to form, fill out some other forms too that I did not fill out. So your names might show up on all the ballots. But um, I did as a third party candidate, part of the Bull Moose Party. I did ensure that nobody was able to achieve the fifty percent that they needed to win. The election. So now there's a runoff off because I am a disruptor. I'm a political disruptor. I'm out there talking for the little guy. I'm telling you, like, you know what Sheila Jackson Lee and fucking whatever the other John Whitmire weren't doing? They weren't telling you how to solve the problems in the Middle East, which isn't really Houston's mayor's problem. But good to know that they have a, like a finger on the pulse, right? Wouldn't you rather is, have a guy had their finger on the pulse and didn't care at all? Is Turner not running again? No, no, he can't. He's termed out. You can term out as mayor? You get two terms. Honestly, had no idea. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't if you could just be mayor for life. On. If you could be mayor for life, I would have absolutely run for mayor like hardcore and like invested into it because if I got in that mayor spot, I was never giving it up. Jerry Gergich, baby. Pat, one, be of a the, good guy. one of the props or amendments, whatever, on the ballot was to raise the retirement age for judges like what are you guys doing no i think it was rejected you know we're not raising so you, yeah, you want to no no no, no, no. you're gonna stay here longer whose wild fucking idea was it to go you know what we should do let's keep people in their positions for longer and you know the who should be in there longer like 65 guys that make, and knew that it, guys that make the guy so, so much and money that they can number. retire let's fucking keep them in Jesus Christ. That guy shouldn't just be fired. He should be fired out of a fucking cannon close range against a hard wall. Well, it got rejected. It got rejected. But really, what's important is that I Ross Perot this whole mayoral race. And because enough people wrote my name in, I was able to. I'm going to take. I, I, that's, there's no science to back this up. So don't go looking for it anywhere. But like, I am claiming that I caused enough of a disruption to make sure that neither of the two main candidates got enough votes to become the mayor. Now we have to have a runoff. So I forced the runoff to show that the little guy does sort of have a say. Shout out to the little guy. Shout out to the little Can, guy. Not me. Not me. Shout out to the little guy because I'm here for you. I'm a man so, of the people. I'm fighting for you guys. In the runoff, is are they the only two options or can write-in yes. still happen? They're the only two options. So you can't write in anymore? I don't believe so. Damn it. Because I was going to say I was about to throw my hat in the ring. Because I think it's about time I finally got involved in politics. But I want to start a new party. And I can't think of a better name for it right now. This is not the name we're going to use. But, you know, let's just call it the hate party. And not that we're running on hate. Mm. It's it's a party for people that absolutely hate fucking government. We're not libertarians because, like, they've got good we ideas. But they've also got some fucking batshit ones. Same with liberals. Same with conservatives. All of them have good ideas but then they fucking stick to their principles on dumb shit. I don't think you should be able to hold office unless you fucking hate government. And you don't have respect for people that do that. Because people that love government and want to stay in it, that's the problem. It should be somebody that's like, I just got to, I got to do this job for four years. Then I'm going to get the fuck out because this sucks and it's stupid. I don't remember where I was going with that, but I think it's a good idea for a party. We obviously can't call it the hate party. We're going to attract a lot of groups that we don't yeah. want in our party. That's why Bull Moose is always just cool to go with. Like, it's like that they're kind of dormant. Bring it back. 
Sounds familiar. Old Teddy Rose has had it. T. Rose, love Moose that guy. guy. Maybe I'm a we'll bull moose wigs. guy, but I'm a disruptor politically. And that's what I do, guys. When you need somebody to be a disruptor, you get Alex to go out there. And I go out there and I don't win the election, but I make sure that like now they have a second step because the little guys like me and you that went out there and supported me, we hey, said, fuck you guys. We want the third party guy. I think you're a hero because you've done more than most people in this world will ever do to disrupt the flow of government. And I'm I'm fucking proud of you for that, man. I've never been more proud. I was very proud of you getting engaged and marrying Emma. I think it's rude what you did to her by marrying her, because how dare you subject her to you? But you know what? She seems happy, so God bless you. She you know, you, she dis- her, yeah. you disrupted the flow of government, and I think that's a noble, honorable thing you did. And I'm do. proud of you, buddy. That's what I do. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Hey, you I know was going to call myself Cheers a hero, but I you, appreciate buddy. you calling me that. You're Thanks, a fucking dude. hero, bud. Disrupt. Hey, to the disruptors out there, all right? Be a disruptor, everybody. Disruptor this is a party. Podcast That's of it. disruptors. This is a, a the podcast of uh, the D party. Ah, fuck D- that Democrat. Dude, it's the disruptor party. And you know what? We're going to DP the government. Let's no, do it. No, we just call it the D party. And then they'll be like, wait, Democrat? You're like, no, no, no. We're taking that from them. This is our party. That's how much we're disruptive. We're that disruptive. We're taking the D. Give government the D. From you guys. Yeah. The D party. But yeah. Political disruptors. It's just fun to say disruptor. I've, I've set, I started saying it today when I realized there was a runoff, and I was like, fuck, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the fuck out of that. Let's all be disruptors. So that's just the natural flow. Like, uh, what was his name? Uh, fuck. He was the Maverick. They had, he had the dumbass Alaskan as he's running. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. Yeah, well, I mean, he's not lying. Uh, uh, Lisa Ann played her in a porn. Fuck. <laughs> you guys aren't going to help me, so I'm going to... If you don't help me, I'm Sarah just going to talking. Yes, okay, but who did she run with? She was the VP for what's-his-name? John McCain. John McCain. So he was a maverick, and then Trump was an outsider, and you're a disruptor. That's the next That's the next I'm stage. Disruptor. Fuck yeah. The disruptor. That also sounds like it would be like a Fox, Alex. Alex like the disruptor. Tuesday night Middleton. show. You're going you're gonna to walk into your bedroom tonight and just like stand in the fucking... In the doorway and back. Hey, Emma. You want me to disrupt your guts, man? <laughs> How does it feel that you get to sleep next to the disruptor? <laughs> I'm going to disrupt your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you already do. You wake me up at 3.30 in the fucking morning. <laughs> um, all right. So politics. That's back. Also back this week, not nutting because it's no not November, fellas. So, ah, shit. I forgot oh. again. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I broke that already. <laughs> I probably broke That's just, that. I don't know. I forgot that. I always forget the thing until November rolls around. And you're like, all right, dudes. And I think they're more just memes because I don't really think people do know not November. And I think if you say you do, you're a liar. I'm just going to tell you right now. Like, and you're, you're just liar. stupid. You're don't adding unnecessary you. stress. Why do that? Why? I mean, I probably broke it anywhere between 30 to or 15 to an hour and 15 minutes into the month. So. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Maybe not. I don't know if I was still at my buddy's house the next day. It's nice if you don't do that at your buddy, at your buddy's house. I didn't say I didn't do it there. I just, I'm not going to do oh, it well. when I'm going to bed. Fair. No, Fair. I totally jerked it in his house. I was there for okay. five days. Oh. I'm just not going to tell him where. That's for him to find out. <laughs> you left a little treat for him to find. It's a little surprise for him. He also he also thought my prank of uh, switching his silverware drawer with the drawer next to it was really funny. So I was, I was happy with that. How long did it take him to figure it out? Dude, he didn't even say anything. Like four days later, I texted him. I was like, did you find my prank? He was like, oh, yeah, that was really funny. I was like, what the fuck? He didn't, he didn't, oh, by the way, he did exactly what I thought. He didn't switch it back. He's just getting used to it in the new spot. <laughs> He's a lazy fuck like me. That's why we've been best friends since the fourth Thanks grade. Thanks for rearranging. His wife is probably like, can we move this back? He's like, no. I'm not learning a new thing again. I'm already learning the new system. 
he gave me a Mickey Mouse hat, and I gave him a uh, new thing for his brain to learn. And you rearranged part of his house, so that's cool. Changed things up. Um, next comeback kid we got is sign stealing, because Michigan has been getting investigated for they basically would get one of their employees to go to opposing teams games when they weren't playing them and try and find their signs and steal their signs so they could tell what the other team was calling. Sometimes there's no proof that he was able to like do all of that. But now Michigan is accusing other schools of stealing their signs and what they've really done. It's throwing a pickle in the whole thing is like they've released like anonymous reports that like so-and-so says this is what's happening some anonymous other school coach says this is happening but nobody can put their name on anything because i think like what the astros did a lot of people were there's this gray area of like this is fine this is not allowed and they're towing that line of like "Eh, i mean he bought tickets the guy bought like the guy bought tickets to these games and it's like you or i or robert could go to any U of H game on any given weekend and just stare at the opposing team signs and try and decipher them. We could do that. And then we could just email them to the, uh, uh, like the following weeks uh, team that they're playing and be like, Hey, just, we were just hanging out in the stands. This is what we caught. And if they chose to use that, it's like, is that cheating? Is that cheating or is that not cheating? It's like, yeah, it looks kind of sketchy. I agree. I agree. But if everybody's kind of doing that, I don't know. And it's kind of like where NIL, people are like, I don't like NIL. It's like, why? Why don't you like NIL? What you, like nobody's getting paid? How do you get all the best recruits then? How? How? How do you get the best recruits? It's crazy how Clemson has fallen off. It's crazy. That's weird. But yeah, it's all of the people are having to kind of be anonymous and not directly be like, I think so and so should design because this is wrong. Because then they're like, cool, you know what we're going to do? We're going to look into what this guy's up to. Oh, hey, turns out your school is actually doing some fucked up shit, too, when we really look into it. And it's a lot, a lot of the uh, it's a game of chicken. To, like, call out Michigan, you got to really be like, well, uh, we're abs- – like, like Sam Houston State could call out Michigan because there's no fucking way in hell. Who but- Sam Houston State, by the way, just got their first in FCS win. No big deal. Not to brag or anything. It'll be Kennesaw State. Um, so you might cats. But like, if Sam Houston State did it, like, well, there's no way in hell you guys are really fucking doing this to win. You're not winning. But like, I, Michigan, Alabama, it's like you don't think that they've had a guy that's probably trying to steal signs from Tennessee the week before. Probably, probably happens to all the big schools. There's probably somebody that maybe doesn't have a job title of that, but that's a part of their duty that they do things like that. If you can decipher the signs by sending somebody there. And then do that in game in real time. Good on you. I always think that like that is a lot more work than it is to just beat the other team. If you can get like, oh, okay, this guy does this. Watching film, being like, oh, this guy when he's when he's gonna rush, he puts three hands down. When he's not gonna rush, he has four hands down on the line. It's very easy to tell those things. If if there's tells, you know. But like, I think that there's so much. There's so much that goes into that. Like with the Astros stuff, it's like, so you may tell me like, unless he has a buzzer, that's like, it's going to be a fastball right down the middle. Like he's got to get a buzzer while a pitch is about to come at like a hundred miles an hour ish. And then be able to like, his brain is like, okay, this is coming. Now I know exactly. I don't even know why you're talking about buzzer. There's no buzzer. There's not. I'm saying it was a trash like, can. when people were coming up, when it was a trash can, but then there was the buzzer theory. And it's like all of that, like okay, which cool. was completely bang, debunked. Bang. It was completely debunked, so no, bang, don't even bang, bring it up. Bang, bang, bang. That means it's going to be a curveball three times. Okay, you don't know where the curveball is going to be. You know that it's going to be a curveball, so maybe you know the ball's going to curve back in, but you don't know exactly when. You don't know how much it's going to curve. There's so much that goes into that, and the time that you're hearing that to the time that you have to react to it, it's like, I get it. If you can get an edge on that, then good on you, because that's really, really fucking tough to do. Like to decipher somebody's signs, like this is what this means. They're doing that thing now. We have to do this. Then to communicate it to people, it takes way too long. Like the, you, you get minimal advantage, even if you do all of that work. I feel like not even I, worth it. I learned from this that teams don't change their hand signals week to week. That's fucking crazy. I assumed this went on already. I assume in high school football, we change guys every week, dude. It's college football. 
It is Colts playing against other Colts who hate each other. And you thought it was just like, nah, we can just keep the same hand signals. They're not trying to decode them. What? Are you fucking kidding me? I didn't know this was illegal. Dude, the fact that uh, one of the games he was wearing, or a guy that looked like him, I don't know if they ever proved it, he was on the Central Michigan sidelines with what could have been sunglasses that had a camera in it. Also could have been a glare that caused a wink on the camera or on the side of the sunglasses. I don't know. But, like, I don't – I I, I just – when it came out that they're investigating for this, I was like, I just – I thought that was part of the game. I just assumed it was part of the game. Yes, of course you try and steal other teams' signs and decode them. Dude, literally, depending on what side of the field you're on, all of your signals are broadcast on television. Yeah. Because if you're running the no huddle, it's showing the wide side of it, and you can see the coach on the sideline do whatever the fuck that they're doing. And they're like, oh, but he did it. And, oh, and he gave it to other schools, too. And now Michigan's like, well, we have proof of you guys giving our shit between each other. It's just the whole thing is fucking crazy to me. I don't understand. And I, I will like- say this. I will say this, though. I fucking hate Michigan. I've always hated Michigan until conference realignment happened. They, they were – them versus Notre Dame was one of the biggest rivalries in sports. Uh, I mean, they played each other every year for like 86 years in a row. They're the two winningest football programs in the history of the NCAA. I fucking hate Michigan. But I respect the fact that when Ohio State was beating their ass year after year after year, after for basically like one and a half, two decades, they took it on the chin. They took it on the chin and they were like, God damn it. Ohio State got so used to beating them that two years in a row, they don't win and they go, Let's start an investigation. This couldn't possibly happen. Wah, 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 wah. Stop being little pussies. You're getting beat. You know why you're getting beat? Because you play finesse football. And Jim Harbaugh showed up and goes, guess what we're going to do? We're going to punch them in the fucking throat for four quarters. We're going to run the ball down their goddamn throat. Because while the entirety of all of football is going spread offense, we're going to zag. They zigged, we zag. And we're going to run it down their fucking throats. And they can't handle it because they're not built to do that anymore. And Ohio State. And we also might know some of your signs. They must be cheating. They got to be cheating. We don't. They couldn't beat us without cheating. Uh, Or how about the fact that quarterback's not that fucking good anymore? Huh? No, last year they had C.J. Stroud. That's a different story. He's fucking great. But, like, yeah, dude, they just play big boy football. They play a – like, I don't know who said it. I've heard it before. But Ohio State built a team to win national championships. Michigan built a team to beat Ohio State. And Ohio State didn't like that. So they threw a fucking fit. The head coach got his former CIA brother-in-law to start a fucking investigation against them. And, and, and you know who I respect the most out of all this? Connor Stallions, the guy that was doing the dirty work for Michigan because he's a long, he's a diehard Michigan fan. He lives, eats, and breathes University of Michigan football. And he got caught. And you know what he did? He shut the fuck up. He was like, I ain't giving you shit. Yeah, I'm going to get fired from the school that I love and the dream job that I always wanted to have. Yeah, and he was like, you know what? No, fuck you. Because you know what? They're still my school. I did what I had to do to make my school win. I respect the fuck out of that man. And if I, even though I hate Michigan, I will always hate Michigan. I ever meet that guy, I'm buying him a beer. (laughs) He's a guy like me, like on Mondays after Giants games, and I do do a podcast on the Giants anyways, do multiple ones, but like when... I have to cover the Giants. I like have to go rewatch that condensed version of it. You can watch the all twenty two if you have the NFL Plus app and you have the subscription to it. And so I'll be like, all right, like what's like what's going on here? Like, let me look at this. Like, he's that guy. And then it's like, hey, coach. Like, he somehow found a way to be like, hey, coach. I've been watching some film. Like, yeah, no, I don't work for you or anything. But I noticed like they're kind of cheating over on third and uh and shorts when you guys are doing this. Maybe this is something you could take advantage of. And it's like if you somehow sent an email that got through to. Somebody on the administration is like, all right, this guy actually sees something. Um, do you want to come like show us some more stuff you see? Like that's basically what he did. But then he was just like, I think they're doing this thing when they do this sign. And when this sign, they do this sign. But all the sign stealing thing reminded me of is in high school, we had coaches that would do the signs. So they'd have multiple coaches do the signs at the same time. And you'd be like, 
okay, like we know this drive, this guy's doing the signs, this drive, this guy's doing the signs. And I remember I was so bad at remembering that shit that like there were several times I'd get out there and be like, uh, I don't. like that, like one coach was doing, we were doing a scrimmage and it was against, uh, it was against Stratford High School. Andrew Luck was on the other side. And uh, I remember Coach Edwards was doing whatever. He was the dummy coach. And I thought he was the main coach who was giving out the signs and he was like throwing up the hand signals or whatever. And then he did like the chicken thing. And I was like, that's not, oh no. Oh no. That, <laughs> oh, oh no. And I just the panic set in. So I was like, we're running to go. We're just running to go. Yeah, because worst case scenario, as a wide receiver, what the fuck are you doing? If you run a go and it's a run play, well, your guy is probably you're chasing you. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's supposed to be a run play and you don't know and yeah. you run a go, you're you're probably taking the DB out of the play anyway. If you're supposed to run a specific route and you just run a go, the quarterback will be like, well, he's not there. What the fuck? And move past it. A go yeah. is always do a good, I don't week. know what to do route. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run a go. And my blazing speed is a... Uh... Like a five eight white guy is really gonna gonna get everybody, but um, that's why I didn't make it a league, guys. That's really why I couldn't uh, I couldn't tell who was making the signals. It wasn't any athletic anything. But, yeah, it, yeah, that, yeah, it wasn't your athleticism. It think. was your it was your data processing abilities. That's why you didn't make it. It was my data processing abilities. That's exactly what it was. Exactly what it was. But yeah, uh, sign stealing is back, and just college football. I think more than any it. sport in anything. Like you got a lot of people with a lot of money with lots of time and like college football message board person is just a different breed of people. I'm a Reddit guy. I lurk on Reddit and you can say I'm a, I'm a scumbag. I am. Okay. I'm fine with that. But like oh, college sure football message board guy, that's just on like, he's not on like the university of Texas message boards. He goes to the A&M message boards to send troll posts, but to pretend that he's an A&M fan to try and see if A&M fans are like, Oh no, I will. I'll buy out Jimbo's contract myself. Blah, 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 blah. This is bullshit. Like just to disrupt shit. He's a disruptor. I appreciate that. But like college football fans have a lot of time on their hands to go and talk about like, are we going to get this 14-year-old? He's really good in junior high down in uh, DeSoto, Texas. I'm thinking maybe we should DM him, try and get him to come to play for uh, for the University of Texas. And you're like, probably don't need to be reaching out to kids like that. But uh, good thought ahead for the future. Without a doubt. And I'm not even going to say without a doubt in my head. I'm just saying this is a fact. Without a doubt, the greatest fans in all of sports are college football fans. And I don't mean people that – love college football and watch college football. I mean fans that only watch college football. They don't give a fuck about the NFL. They don't watch the NBA. They don't watch baseball. College football is what they watch. Those are the greatest fans in all of sports because that's who you're talking about. That's the best for guy. That's the Reddit guy. That's the guy who's going to work his way into working for his dream school to steal signals and give them to his school. And then when he gets caught, he just go it buttons up and goes, I'll just go back to watching it on my couch, working my nine to five. Cool, fuck y'all, not telling you anything. I helped us beat our rival two years in a row. I lived my dream. I'm going to tell I'm my king. grandchildren about this. My grandchildren will tell their grandchildren about this, that I was the guy. Like, of course, the players did it. But, like, as a fan, I played a role in us beating our rival. That's yeah. the greatest fan in all sports. Honestly, I think Connor Stallion should win an award at the ESPYs this year for fan of the year. They should build a statue for him. They should build a statue. They won't do that because they have maybe, to disassociate. Maybe, but like, at the Gravies Awards, do we give a fan of the year Gravy? I think we get. I, I think. I and we like, can. I, do we invite like, Connor? The, something drastic has to happen for Connor Stallions to not. Act, yeah. You know what we should do? We got to. We got to keep tabs if he's on cameo. And make him accept the award, the award, and, that and have him give the award to himself. And that'd then be, that'd be we won't mail it fuck. to him because that would cost money. But actually, for this, I would. Foot we'll the give bill it to that. Robert. Robert will be in charge of me. I, 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 I would foot the bill for that, and and we would put it, the trophy. Well, if we put the trophy in there, he's going to get it. But I would like to have it, give him a sealed envelope. We go. You are. You open this and read it as it happens, so he's generally surprised and has to accept it. I would, I am no doubt foot the bill for that. And then at the end, I would write, the, "Go Irish, go fuck yourself." The fan of the year award um, 
for the gravy is actually just a giant ceiling fan. So Robert, you have to find a way to package that up and send it. But that'll be that'll be the award for that. And and, and you know what? And this I'll send a ceiling a, fan. I I have five dollars to buy a beer. Before, but I I will send him a Southern Star too. There we go. That'll be the beer you buy him. Yeah. We gotta we gotta look at fan of the year. And it, just it, have it, a fucking giant ceiling, bro. Like, what am I gonna if, do with this? If he doesn't hop on cameo, I would actually respect him more. I would. Re- I, no, he I, might. He might want to lay low. He might I want to lay low. I, I wouldn't lose any respect for him if he jumps on cameo because he's like, oh, I've got these fifteen minutes of fame. I should make money off of it. But if he doesn't, and he's just like, did my job, check clocking out now. I'd be like, fuck, I respect that. I will. I wish he was a Notre Dame fan. Yeah. Because, like, that's that's the kind of fans that Notre Dame needs. Guys like him who could never go to the school but love the school so much. Except Notre Dame would be like, you're not associated. We can't take any of your information. Fucking integrity. I hate that the school I like has integrity. It's such bullshit. I want to win some natties, dude. I want to win some natties. No Connors Dyads on... on, um... Just keep an eye. Maybe we can deal. I'm I'm gonna. God, I doubt he has any social media. I'm gonna find a way to contact this motherfucker. His DMs might be packed right now. Like, it's crazy the level of respect I have for someone who's a fan of a school that I hate with every inch of my being. I love this guy. So yeah, I shout to that guy. And I don't think it has anything to do with Um, the two beers and whiskey that I've been drinking. I just respect this man. Probably not. Next comeback, just, kid. Just guy, you know what? Guy college. Fucking breaking Guy-cology. the rules for something that you love. I like my team. I help my team. Um, Fortnite is our next comeback kid of the week because um, it's not super significant to me. It just makes like the wait times longer for me, but everybody's back on it. Shout out to me for making it cool again, for playing Fortnite this whole time while it wasn't cool, but now it's gotten cool again, so I've made it through a whole cycle. Uh, really, really, they just brought back the original map from the game first launched. Not like, original. All right. Well, it's, like it. it's like chapter three. It's like chapter three of of the original. The original was a pretty barren one. They brought back the best map. It's so good. Uh, okay. It's but so it was like, good. yo, bro, we get to go to this. I'm like, I don't know what the names of those places are, but like, this is fun, and I kind of get a little bit of an edge on people that like haven't played in a while because like I've been playing it, so that'll take all of like this week and then I'll lose that edge again, but whatever me and Pat, I think we won like three or four games yesterday. We were fucking absolutely just wrecking people. Uh, Pat and three, I just, we might have to, sorry, sorry, three consecutive games that we won three consecutive. And we, games. I know we, I know we won at least one more. We might've won another one, two in there. We and won four, we'll get, we went four yeah. out of like seven. There's lots of bots right now. Shut the fuck up. Flags fly forever. Okay. They're not Check though. Stats, I, I don't think there are. There's there's a lot of bots, dude. There's a lot of bots. Remember remember those games that we were playing later on when we didn't see anybody until the very end game? It's because it's bots that just like run into trouble and die immediately. No. There are. Hey, but you know what? End of every game, what we weren't fighting bots. We, we were fighting real people. people. And guess who came on top? And we're always everyone's like, Jesus Christ, they're talking about video games they play. I get it. It's Sorry. a comeback kid. But it's a comeback hey, kid. Dub Dub City. And by the way. Fortnite, brilliant again. They were the most profitable game of all time at one point. Then they did something stupid. Fan base, uh, player base fell off. Now they're like, dude, let's get everyone back and let's throw a bunch of bots in it so everyone's winning games to get super back into it and spend some more money. They're making so much money right now. They're making yeah. so much money again. But it's just sick to like, like now I get to hang out with Pat on Xbox too. Pat would always be Bro. a Call of Duty guy. And I'm like, we, oh, Pat, we, we squatting? We might. We squatting? We might have to. We I think we can only do duos because I don't know about your friends, but I don't trust any of my friends on a Twitch. Stream. No, absolutely, same way, same. Um, so, but we might have to bring back some Twitch streaming for this because this is fun. Maybe this, having, maybe this weekend we hop on. We I've been having a lot like of show. fun with it lately, man. A lot of fun. It's pretty sick. We'll, we'll, figure, we'll people, figure out we some time. It's great. Or or like maybe like maybe Friday because like you know the weekend there's college football and pro football right right we gotta Thursday. find like, whatever has the the shittiest slate of games on like saturday afternoon or whatever and be like we'll do this during like the lull we'll we'll throw we'll hop on 
for 30 minutes and run a couple games. And then, boom, we're out. In and out. You can watch a couple games, hang with the boys. <sighs> then we're out. Sunday, the the gap between the night game and the, and the, the 3 o'clock slate. We can do that. You know, let's say, you know, we'll play this off air. Let's not talk about it right now. It's not important. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good, important. Good, good move, Pat. Good but guys, move, Pat. if you want to, if you want to see some idiots Fortnite's getting back. some dubs, just watch us. Fortnite. Shout out to uh, Brandon Davis. We were playing, uh, he's Texas Cat Daddy. Our boy, Texas Cat Daddy. We were playing with him last night. We got a dub. Gravy Gang dubs, best kind of dubs. Gravy Gang dubs are the best dubs. Um, and then final comeback here this week is soup season because soup season is in full effect. I've had fucking soup three times already from last week. Fucking awesome. Love it. It's a nice little treat. Soups are back. And soup, um, soup. we still need to do our uh, gallon of soup. Just carry those gallons around every every year around this time. We say we're gonna do that. We just don't do it because I don't have the balls to like fill a but gallon of it's anything it, with soup. It's because every time we say it, it's because we we get excited that first cold, and then what happened? It got cold for a week, and then we got three weeks in a row where it wasn't cold anymore. Now, yeah, but still I, soup. I think it's Friday to Wednesday. We got a cold front coming in, so we're gonna have. Dude, the weekend, dude, it's gonna feel like college football. Dude, this this might be the best week college football Saturday we have. I don't, I don't Ooh, know we what. Get soups hit. Now, see, here's the thing: I can just steal a gallon of gumbo from work, and I can fill myself up a gallon, which is dope. Which, which, and I, and I, I realize as I say it, like I can't believe we blocked gumbo as a soup from you in that draft. It's the biggest robbery and chicken and done. dumplings and chicken and dumplings. I got vetoed on both of those. Wait, yeah, I did on it, both of those. I, I will admit, on my part, that was ignorance on the chicken and dumplings. I'd never seen it as at my soup. grocery store. Chicken and dumplings, the the H E B brand chicken and dumplings soup hey, thing. It's under soups. Up. No, I, hey, I, 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 I retroactively, they're wrong. I retroactively award you the win on that one. I don't know what that does, but it is what it is. I don't even know if I did win that. Yeah, but. That was I doubt ridiculous. you won. I mean, if you got robbed of gumbo and chicken and dumplings and stuff, I don't think you won. There's no way you. That won. was the most backlash we've ever gotten on a mock draft or a yeah Mount Rush. Because like, because like, I, I I understand my reasoning at the time, and I was probably drunk. It was later I, in the episode. But yeah, I was it was solid years. reasoning, but it was wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong. But it is what it is at this point. You know, I, I like I said, it hand up. Takes a big man to admit that he's wrong, and I I, I respect that. And Robert, or did you want to apologize to me as well? No, I'm gonna hold my ground. Fuck. I didn't. I didn't. I was gonna make sure. Like I knew you. You hadn't said it. And I was like, he's. I don't think he's gonna. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna issue a challenge to Pat since it's soup season. That I just thought would be a funny visual. Um, this weekend, what if we just ate only soup? See, like, see, like you, I... show me your lineup. Show me your lineup Friday night, and you're like, give me six soups, and like, or just buy six soups, and like, that's what we're eating this weekend. You can eat other stuff, but like, dude. I'm pretty stoked. Like Saturday morning, wake up, watch college football, heat up a little soup. Dude, when we dinner, had that, heat up some more soup. When we had that cold snap, my sister made stew and I ate it for like a week straight. Dude, Just potatoes fuck, yeah. and carrots and fucking beef and a thick fucking bro. Oh, so good. I almost went full Theo Vaughn right there. I'll post my uh my soup my soup lineup. On Friday, um, my remind my, me to post my soup lineup, and then now I'll eat all soups this weekend. Here's my cheese concern: cheese dips are her Friday nights. My concern is I'm not going to get enough carbs out of that to offset the amount of drinking I'm do, going to do. Because well, then just eat other stuff to supplement. I fu- that. I fully anticipate that the Steelers are going to rock the Packers, and I'm going to go back to sad drinking. Mm. Yeah, you can have bread with soup. I'll get rolls. I'll get rolls. Rolls. And just get other stuff, too. You can have soup and a salad, soup and a sandwich, soup and anything. I think soup and salad is bullshit. I do, too. But, like, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm okay with it because I get soup out of it. And that's really, I think. And, and, uh, actually, I don't know why I said that. That's I just don't. a way to say I just don't. have a soup. I, 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 I instantly, as soon as I said the words, I was like, no, you don't believe that soup. Good salad. Good. What the fuck am I talking about? Soup salad's great. Well, sandwich why is would, better than salad. Why, all, why all did I just say that's bullshit? I don't even believe that. I'm Sometimes getting dumber. You just fire off quick, a take dude. and you hope it sticks. 
No, I don't hope that sticks. Right. That was a bad take. I, I well, don't even believe it. You just fire I don't off know a take, why dude. I said it. I just, I am, you know, we're going to blame it on the fucking mucus in my head. I, I'm assuming people can hear it. I don't know if you guys can. I'm fucking blocked up. But yeah, let's He's move fucking. on. That was, that was dumb. That was, that was, and I've said a lot of dumb shit on this podcast. That's up there. That's one of the, it's probably a top 10 dumb thing Pat has said. And that's fucking saying something. Soup and salad is great. Uh, so yeah, soup season back, baby. And then take um, the croutons this off your salad, I... drop it in your soup. Oh, good. Uh, one quick one before that I just realized that I hadn't written down was uh, Vince McMahon also back because the Vince McMahon mean just uh, where it's like, tell me about the 2017 Astros, daddy. It's just Vince McMahon like tearing up. Like, can't, I can't talk. I can't talk right now. And then I saw it like, because the Giants are going through hell right now currently. And they were like, tell me about Super Bowl 42, daddy. And it's just Vince McMahon just crying. Just, it's not a cat. And it's Eli Manning escaping that sack and throwing the pass to uh, David Tyree. And it's just like, yeah, I'll probably be that guy. This looks uh, it's the greatest game of all time. I think you can claim, I think you can, as a fan, not for the Giants, I think as a Giants fan, you can claim the Raiders win because of Antonio Pierce. I can claim, and then also like our quarterback died. Our quarterback died, so like nobody can beat us after our quarterback is dead. Okay, I finally saw. Did count. he did he tear his ACL the play before he went down? Yes, it was the Connor McGregor thing where like remember when Connor broke his ankle and then he didn't realize he broke his ankle, so he goes to plant on it and was like, "Nope, that's not there anymore." Daniel Jones. He, did it. Uh, he, he looked was trying to make a move. And like you could see his ankle or his knee buckle in the previous play, and then he went to step back to pass. And when he put weight on his back foot, he just it looked just it looked like uh, end of career. He did not Peyton. have an ACL. It looked like end of career Peyton and Eli when like they would just feel pressure and go, "I'm not even going to try and run and <laughs> just self sack." Like there's no point in me taking because yeah. they knew that. And people get on them for the self sack. It makes sense. They're not going to outrun a defensive lineman. Just take the fucking sack. Don't take die the hit. or get hit. Yeah, die or just go down. Yeah, but yeah, R.I.P. Daniel Jones. Like you can say all you want, the guy had a fucking. He gave up his body. Gave up his body Is... for the New York Football Giants. And I, uh, you're a diehard. I will have you... nothing but respect for him. Have you looked into if there's He's an done. out of this contract? Next, oh, not this, not this year. He's he's gonna be on the roster next year. It's it's okay, forty four million dollars you have to pay, twenty two million that, the year after. He'll be the they'll they'll draft a quarterback, or bring in. He'll a be the starter he'll probably. I keep, but he probably won't oh. start until next. He couldn't start until midway through the year next year. He's got an ACL. Uh, uh if Aaron Rodgers Adrian, can come back, Adrian Peterson. If Aaron Rodgers can come back from a torn Achilles in like seven, he's not back er, yet. He's just saying that. Sixteen weeks. He, he's dude. He put out the watch ad, and the watch said ten twenty eight, or not ten twenty eight, twelve twenty eight, whatever it was. That's already passed. Twelve twenty eight, twelve twenty eight. Dumbass. I corrected myself immediately. He said, "Okay, well, yeah, twelve twenty eight. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying." I said, which, by the way, by the time he, by the time he's able to come back, they're probably going to be out of the playoffs, and it won't even make sense for him to come back. Yeah. Um. And then. Uh, yeah, tease and peace, though, buddy. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I, I felt bad for you. So, I. I was just. I'm watching. Just. I, I didn't have the game on. I'm just watching updates on the fantasy. I'm like, what is going on in this Giants game? I didn't realize that your quarterback, his knee died, and you had died. fucking. DJ Polly D playing quarterback for you. Well, our backup quarterback is also hurt. So we had our third string quarterback. Is is Tarod coming Tommy back? Tommy DeVito. Week? Are you guys yeah. rocking? Ooh. Tommy DeVito and Matt Barkley. So you're not going to have the sound on that game, huh? Um, It's going to be not fun. We might Dallas this weekend. We we've said it all year, and we never and did. We I might, might kill myself. We might we might have to get together. We might have to get together and watch the games together this weekend, especially if the Packers and Giants play in the same slate. And let's just watch in misery together. Great. Well, the Giants and Cowboys are America's game of the week. The the three o'clock prime slate. Great idea, guys. Tommy DeVito. Oh, and it's too late to flex <laughs> it. 
Oh no, dude. Well then maybe might, we I might, might we myself. Might, we might still have to watch together. So that during uh, I'm looking up right now when the Packers are playing, I think they're the early slate. But like we might have to yeah, Packers are early. So you might have to support me during the early slate and I might have to or not so much support as stop from killing ourselves. You might have to mm. for three hours you gotta get me and then I gotta get you. I think that still counts as support. This is gonna, yeah. this is gonna be uh, <laughs> this, this is gonna be a bad support. this is gonna be a bad I hate it already. Time. I have never looked forward to a Sunday less than this one. Um oh god, but, like, it's to the be fair, it couldn't even be the 305. Like make that game the 305. Fair, Tommy DeVito, it does sound like he would be a New York starting quarterback, does he not? Like, that's a great name. He does have a gold no, chain. No, Tommy DeVito he, sounds like he would own a Giants bar. Right, but, like, Tommy DeVito being the quarterback of the Giants does make sense. He's the most – by the way, I love him. He's the most Guido quarterback. He His initials are TD, so, of course, being an Italian, he got a gold TD chain. Oh, am I talking Which about the touchdowns? Cool when I'm you're throwing? not throwing interceptions, or am I talking about my initials? I'm Tommy DeVito. Yeah, my uncle owns Tommy a fucking, fucking sub thing. shop, and my other uncle owns a fucking pizza place. His uncle is actually the Jersey Mike. A lot of people don't know that about Tommy. You're DeVito. not His getting uncle me. started Jersey you're not, Mike's. You're not. You're not getting me. You're not getting me on this one. You thought you no, were gonna just suck clip. me into another. That was the clip. No, no, that was the clip. Here. no. All right, no, no, role I, play no, again. I, role play it again. We'll clip it, okay, and fine, it'll be great, fine. and then it'll go viral. Fine, fine, fine. I'll do this and, for you. Okay, I'll do so this for you. Just start off and be like, you, you, they're playing the Cowboys so, with Tommy fucking DeVito at quarterback. Yeah, Tommy DeVito. He's probably got one uncle who owns a fucking pizza parlor, and another uncle who owns a fucking deli slash sub shop. You know. Fun fact about Tommy DeVito, his uncle actually did start Jersey Mike's. What? Is that good enough for you? Huh? I earthquake that take for you? <laughs> that was my favorite thing is in my head, he was like, he thinks he's going to get a clip and I'm going to fucking ruin it again. <laughs> I wanted the- you know what? Still clip that. Who fucking cares? Still, oh, of course we're still <laughs> going to use that. <laughs> Us, we found Tommy Vito's uncle and Vito Jersey Mike's, and then Giants Twitter's like, what the fuck? He did not. None of that happened. I'm you surprised know. you didn't try and t- convince me that Jersey Mike was named after fucking the situation. <laughs> you thought you were going to get me with the first one, though. Because I fall for it every... That's probably... I'm now, like... One for 30 on you catching me on dumbass shit you say and me just falling for it. I'm a believer. It's who I am. I just believe in I believe it. I probably believe like 80% of lies that have been told to me in my life. Yeah. I just you take do. people for what they say. See, it was when I was young, I was naive. And as I got older, it was just my way of going, yeah, let's end this conversation quicker. I agree. Sure. And I'm also usually I'm also usually drunk, so I'm easy to get. There you go. go. Yeah. Um Vince McMahon back because of all that. And then Tommy DeVito. We tell everybody about uh, Southern Star Brewing Company. Oh my God, guys. And as we said, it's not cold right now, but Friday it's gonna be cold. You know what you need to do? Get your ass to your local AGB, Kroger, Aldi. Whole Foods, whatever you got next to you, uh, Twin Lick or not Twin Liquors, that's uh, from college, uh, Total Wine, Specs. Get yourself some Southern Star right now. I highly recommend the Buried Hatch Stout, cold weather, dark beer. It's beautiful. I'm trying to get myself in a cold mindset. So, all day today, I've been drinking Boilermakers. I got about that much whiskey in there each time. Top it off with the rest of the beer. It gets you going. Plus, you, guys, it's Texas. We're used to being hot 95% of the time. As soon as the weather changes, what happens at work? 95% of your coworkers are like, I'm sick. I'm sick. You're not sick. The weather changed. Your body feels weird. You know how you counteract that? Boilermakers, baby. My headset almost flew off my head right there. A little bit That's of whiskey exciting. in your beer. What do we always talk about with Southern Star? You mix this beer with that beer, that beer with this beer. You know what? Throw a little whiskey in there. Your favorite whiskey? It is a perfect cold weather 
combo. It's great. It's delicious. It gets the job done every time, just like Southern Star. You get home at the end of a long ass day. You don't want to drink. You're like, you're not like, oh, it's fuck. I mean, it's Tuesday. Like, I'm not trying to get fucked up. But you know, you had a long day at work. You get yourself a candy cigarette and you grab yourself a bombshell blonde. It's a perfect combination right there. I do like just the idea that Pat's going to just start using candy cigarettes as like a snack. Bro, I'm <laughs> like, gonna just I'm gonna be rocking. What do you mean a candy cigarette? Why, dude? I'm okay. I probably won't do this. I'm definitely not gonna do it. I wanna be just chomping on a candy cigarette while I'm dropping off lunch to high schoolers. I think it'd be funny. Might cause a bit of a problem the, for my job. In your little like shirt pocket. <laughs> Kids are walking up to get their lunch. I'm like, keep one behind your ear. What's your name? <laughs> Dude, roll it up in my sleeve like it's fucking 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> but how okay, well, let's get back to yeah. Southern, Southern Star. Star. Southern I, Star. I, I stopped by today. I actually I there's Southern still Southern if you can good. find it, there's still some Dortmund Rebels out there, which is a great beer. Uh of course, the strawberry blonde, the actually this might be the last couple days. Go, I would say I would highly recommend as you're listening to this. Pause it, hop in your car, put it back on, drive to your specs or whatever, wherever you buy it from, get yourself some uh, Southern brunch, go crack it next to the pool. We're getting some cold weather coming up. Enjoy the pool the next couple of days while you can do this. Southern Star Brewery Company. We got some events coming up. Just, I guess it's not that recent, but December 3rd. This is one you need to put on your calendars, though. Brisket you at Southern Star. They do it. At least once a year. I feel like they've done it already this year, but we're going to promote it for them again. They're going to teach you how to smoke brisket, how to cook it. Backyard Pitmasters Barbecue Class. Sorry, Backyard Pitmasters Brisket U Class. It's a class teaching you how to make delicious fucking meat, and they're going to give you beer at the same time. That's the most American goddamn thing I've ever heard of in my life, outside of maybe the croissant sandwich. Just because we took something French and said, fuck it, now it's American. Get your ass up. 3525 North Fraser Street in Conroe. Get up there. Try what's what's in the tap room. They've always got the exclusives. You can always buy stuff that's not even in stores. You can get it out of their little fridge right there. You can take yourself a four-pack, a six-pack home, depending on what it is. Like I said, guys, it's buried hatchet stout season. I'm declaring it right now. It's buried hatchet stout season. I be, the, you know what my favorite thing about this is? Outside of the flavor, when you pour it, it's as dark as my soul as it's coming out of there. There's no bubbles, nothing. Like, I mean, when it hits, there's obviously bubbles. But when it's coming out, this is a dark fucking beer. And if you're like me, if you're a dark beer guy, this is about as dark of a beer as I've ever had in my life. I can't think of a darker beer. It hits different. It really, really hits different. And I just realized that the address that they have on this can is not the address we've been using all these years. This is 1207 FM okay. 3083 Conroe. That ain't. It's 3525 North Fraser Street. I, I know what it is. I think I just realized something that we got to point out to them. They have the wrong address on their fucking cans. Maybe that's where it's. No, we know where it's canned. It's canned. At the, yeah, I don't know. It says best served at 55 degrees. I've been drinking at room temp and it's fucking delicious, guys. But either way, get yourself to the store, get yourself to the brewery. Enjoy some Southern Star. Tell them we sent you. Take a picture in front of the past the gravy. Uh, it's not a poster. It's a flag. It's a flag. It's a flag. Flag that we have up there. Send us a picture of you drinking. A- anywhere you are, send us a picture of you drinking Southern Star. I'll send you one back. I will match there beer you go. for beer every picture that is sent. Challenge. How about that? Shout out to Mikey P. Mikey P was drinking some Southern Star. He got the uh, the combo. It's got the the red velvet cake. It's got the Irish stout or the Irish cream stout. And it's got it's got all the specialty ones. He got to try those, um, and he said he liked them. So shout out to Mikey P. He was tweeting it's at a us. Ni- it's tweeted a nice little change of pace. At, at Southern Star BC, at Southern Star Brewing Co. Tag the people that support the podcast. Let them know you support the people that support us. Southern Star Brewing Company. Don't forget to set your calendars for Saturday, December sixteenth, our tenth annual Christmas Spooktacular going down Ooh. at the brewery. We've also got the Gravies Awards there, too. Uh, Saturday, December 16th, Southern Star Brewing Company, the official beer sponsor of Past the Gravy and the Not Cool segment. 
Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. I had a quick idea. What if, instead of our usual rankings that we do, because you know we're going to do the Christmas movie bracket again. I was going to say, what if we coin flip for it, but that doesn't really work for setting rankings. Never mind. Random number generator for seedings. Seedings, that's what I'm thinking of, not rankings. Just to get, maybe we force some early matchups and we get a different winner later on. And then if we get a really shitty movie that wins, it would really cause some controversy. Get some clicks. Yeah. That'd be just an idea. idea. An idea. Not bad. An idea. idea. Robert's idea. Robert's done with me. He just took his headset off. Robert, you're so sexy. It drives me crazy. You can't even hear Um, this. So the not cool segment is our weekly portion of the podcast. Aside from all the other portions of the podcast where we we vent about things, even though we did just vent about stuff. But um, we encourage you to participate with us. Hit us up on Twitter. We're at Pass Gray Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Not Cool and just kind of vent about something that made you say, "Hey, man, that's not cool." You know, if you stub your toe going to get water in the middle of the night. That's not cool. If you get stabbed, that's also not cool. There's varying degrees of not cool. And we're gonna pick some of the best ones that you guys send in, um, and we will share them with you guys on the podcast. So uh, at Pass the Gravy Pod. On Twitter, hit us up with your not cool and then just summarize it in the tweet. Use the hashtag PTG not cool at the end, send it to us, and that's how we'll get them. Let's start with some of your listener viewer submitted not cools. And uh, our first one is from Jordan Welch. He's at J underscore Welch 2795. Jordan says, His not cool is that some kids in my apartment complex keep knocking on my door, then running off back home, presumably playing a prank. Piss poor parenting or just kids acting like assholes. You're getting ding dong ditched. Yeah, you're getting ding dong ditched. Here's the thing. When you are you keep English, not good for me right now. Do you keep running outside visibly upset? Because they can see you. They're hiding somewhere where they can see you. And if you keep reacting, it's only going to keep going. Like it's the basic rule that we have in our group chat. If you show weakness, you're only going to get hit harder. You just got to, yeah, it's annoying. But you know what? If you're not expecting a guest, don't even answer your door anyway. Who gives a shit? They'll ring a second time if they're still there. It's like my Mm -hmm. theory with phones. I don't answer phone calls from numbers I don't know. If it's important, they'll leave a voicemail or they'll text me. Guess how often that happens? About 4% of the time. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you obviously answer the first time because you're like, what's up? What's going on? The second time, you're like, what, what do you, like, for real, is this going to still go on? After that, you, you got to kind of let them knock and like. Just kids being kids, at a certain man. Point, but at a certain point, you let them knock and then you just watch where they, they go. I think you should and actually you act- go and knock on that door and you're like, hey, you're little shits. We're knocking on my door, and then you just hope they get punished. And it's annoying, not, but I think you should actively support this, Jordan, and here's why. They're, those kids are spending time well, – maybe it's not outside, depending on the setup of the apartment. I don't know if it's indoor hallways or not, but, like, they're out and about in the world. They're being kids. They're running around with their friends. They're not just inside on a video game fucking system. They're being kids. They're experiencing life. They're having fun. They're doing shit they're not supposed to. They're getting in trouble. Ha, ha, ha. That's what kids do. At least they're doing something. That's what we did as kids. I remember dig dog ditching people. It was fucking awesome. I remember getting really mad when me and my brother kept trying to catch someone that was ding dong ditching our house over and over over the course of the day. We were so dumb. We didn't realize it was our neighbor, Joey, literally in the house next was him and his sister sitting on the fence. They would ding dong ditch us and then just run back up and jump on the fence. And we're like, did you guys see him? And they were like, Nope. Just kids playing pranks, man. (laughs) Yeah. We were fucking dumb. And by the way, we weren't like nine or 10. We were like 17 and 15 at this point. We were fucking idiots, but dude, that's just kids being kids. They're having fun. Let them have some fun. I know it's annoying for you. That suck. That is annoying. Or but you also, can look at how to electrocute dumb, your, your, your fucking yeah, you home alone them. doorbell. Yeah. You got you to home alone them, heat the doorknob up. <laughs> I guess you hope they touch the doorknob. 
Or you got to get, yeah, maybe heat the, like, knocker thing if they got that. I don't know. Um, It's one of those you just got to eat that. It really sucks. It's not cool when it's happening. They're picking on you because you keep reacting. The kids are also dumb. And if you tell kids you called, and if you tell kids you called the cops, like they believe you. There, there was this girl one time at my old apartments, and we were at the pool, and she kept splashing us. Like she, we were out of the water, and she just kept splashing us from in the pool. And I was like, st- like intentionally like splashing at us, not jumping in the pool, and it just happened to get on us. And I was like, could you please stop? Could you please stop splashing us? We have our phones and stuff here, and she kept doing it. And I was like, if you do it again. I'm going to tell your mom. And she's like, my mom's not home. And I was like, cool. I'll call the cops and they can tell your mom. And she got scared and went home and told her mom that we were telling her that we were going to call the cops on her. And I was like, oh, no, she was just splashing us with water. And so we told her we were going to go get her mom. And she's like, well, you don't know me. I, was like, I didn't say I knew you. I was just said, I'm going to go tell your mom. She's a child. I'm not going to deal with your child. I was never going to touch your child. I Maybe said, raise like, your kids to not be an asshole. I, the like, I told her a thing. She. Well, but then when I basically explained that, her mom was like, oh, I'm sorry she did that. And then I like, just took her in. And I was like, kids are dumb. And like, these seem like they're probably a little bit older than that, maybe. But like the threat to call the cops, that's all. That's almost as, as good as if you do call the cops. You you aren't a real narc because you don't go call the cops. you just like, I'm going to call the cops. And kids are like, shit, I don't want that happening. The threat of getting in trouble to most kids is uh, is the thing. Although I've seen some other stuff like lately, like kids seem not to care as much about getting in trouble but like yeah if you're like just threaten to call the cops like if you do it again i'm calling the cops and they do it like i'm calling see ya that's their problem it's their problem now no if they you- do it again just like it won't happen but it- but hopefully it doesn't continue just don't be the guy that has the reaction like when you're getting roasted in any group don't be the guy that has the reaction don't ever be the guy that has the reaction because when you have the reaction it's game over the weakness they can smell it's game it over. on you they can smell it on you once they know they got you there's no coming back. I, I, so just don't have the reaction. And the it, if you have retaliate, if you have to react. The kids just put like a sign on your door that says "Private property, no harassment." I don't call the cops. I own a shotgun. That's perfectly or legal a in ring Texas. Doorbell camera. Well, no, I mean camera. like I'm just saying, just threaten kids with a shotgun He's without threatening. See him. Don't do that. I would not. No, 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 no. I'm saying don't threaten them with a shotgun. I'm saying threaten them without threat. Just say, hey, private property. I don't I don't like being harassed. I don't call the cops when I own a shotgun. You don't have to own a shotgun. But maybe that works. And if it doesn't, you go, OK, now on to the next thing. And then if you find out who the kids are and you see their parents and they continue to do it, just like say that they were using hate speech. <laughs> Oh, or or if you find out who they are, then you just start going by their apartment four times a day and you ring the doorbell and then somebody's forced to come to the door and you go, oh, yeah, just disrupting you like your kids did. And then you leave. And, and then exactly. Later, you come and back then and the you parents are the like, what the fuck? You ring like, the doorbell. Right, see, you ring the doorbell and you ring the doorbell. And you're like, see, this is super fucking annoying. Maybe, you're, maybe you tell your kids to stop and I won't come by and ring your doorbell. It's not a harassment. I'm just checking to see if your kids are home. Because I was wondering if they were the ones that just rang my. I don't want to talk to your kids. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to do this until that stops at my house. <laughs> no, so don't do I'm any. Not going to discipline actually, your kids. No, those were all bad ideas. No, we just but that's, just ignore it. That's actually it'll stop. Right, ignore it's the best way. And I don't think like, I feel like Jordan would have given us a follow up if it had continued to happen. This is from a few days ago, so hopefully it's a one off thing. Usually it is. Kids don't really just focus in on somebody and be like, "I'm going to go not like ding dong ditch this person until the end of time." It's usually yeah, just like we're bored. We're going to do this until we get bored of this, and then if you don't react to it, you're good. I almost never. I I honestly don't know if I ever hit a house twice because that rate, like every time you hit it, raises your chance of being caught. Yeah, and usually it's a random spur of the moment thing. We weren't ding. Down ditches. We lived by a golf course, like where we could walk to the golf course, and we would just hide in the bushes on the golf course, right to where like we uh, we would go to the spot basically where like a lot like on the fairway where a lot of the balls would land uh, after the first tee after the tee shot, and we would just run out right after they hit the tee shot and grab the ball and just throw it as far the opposite way towards them. That's as fucked we up. Could. But that <laughs> so was funny to us, and it was assholes. It's, and then one time, no, I laughed. It's very one time, funny. my friend, one time, the godfather of this podcast, Curtis Chafin, got tackled by this guy that followed us into the woods and tackled him, and then tried to take his hat. And then we took his golf club, and then he had to give us the hat back because he didn't realize that I saw him take Curtis's hat. I saw him take Curtis's hat, and I was by his, where his golf clubs were because he left his cart right there, and I just grabbed one of his irons, and I was like, "Fine, get back." 
give it back. I act like I was going to hit him with it. And I was like, I'm not going to give this back until you give that back. I'll bend it. I'll bend it. I'll bend it. And then he gave Curtis his hat back. And <laughs> what are you going to do? Hat, and I really should have just let him take the hat. You should have. But hey, that's you being a true friend. Hey, hey sir, if you don't give back my $17 hat, I'm going to break your fucking $75 club. That was a right. Because right. you could tell he was like, no. And I was like, and then he saw me with the fucking club. Kind of like I was going to hit him. And I was like, I'll just bend it. I'll bend it. I'll bend it. My dad has <laughs> golf clubs. I don't golf, but I know that these are not cheap. I'd love to play around with your dad. I think your dad would like playing with me. Does he still golf? He'd probably play around and golf with it. Yeah. He just golfed last week in Mexico. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm super bad, but I'm really fun. Dude, if you hit, I'll I'll put you in contact with Mark. Mark I'm a vibes guy. You should you should go play with us. I don't know. I just gotta stay off that. That's not me. That's That's not me. Golf ain't me. Here's what happens when you don't golf. You play three holes and then you just drive the cart and you're a vibes guy. I'll sit and I'll hang out and I'll drink with you guys, but I am just not gonna play. There you go. It's a good time. I'm a lot of fun to play golf with. Because I don't fucking care. Ding dong ditching, dude. Uh, that does suck, man. It's just one of those things you had to kind of go through it. We love you, bud. Uh, just don't be the guy that makes reaction to it because the guy that reacts to kids fucking with them always looks worse. It's fucked with more. Fucking with them. You don't want to become the grouchy because, guy that like they'll always you get like, known. You're as the, the adult. grouchy you're guy. You're the adult. Yeah. You don't like, want you to be the Blue it- Radley house. And like every movie with kids growing up, there was always the one house where the guy was the grouchy older guy or the scary guy. Don't become that guy. Just wear it. Let it go. Even if even though you're not old, you're in your 20s. But guess what? To kids, you're fucking old as shit. And Jordan's kind of like, guy. he's like young. He's like a young adult. So like I always in situations like that, I'm like, what are we, what are we doing, fellas? Huh? And you just kind of do the thing where you're like, all right, that's pretty. We just uh, burn it into the magnifying glass, huh? And they're like, is this or, stop us? And you just kind of like laugh and like observe it. And like, that guy was cool. And then like, you, they'll be like, oh, that guy, you, we guys do it. We guys ding dong ditching. All right. You got me this time. It's either that or if it still keeps going on, you've got one option. You sit by your front door at all times with a just a bucket of water balloons. And the second they come up and hit it, you open that door and you just unleash fury on them. That's good too. That's the only and other that's option. Honest. It's that's it's honest. either you do nothing or you spend every minute of every day next to your front door, which is that's not worth do. it in the end, the long run. But yeah, buddy, uh, I hope they didn't continue doing that, man. Just don't make the reaction and the re- not giving them a reaction kind of makes it less fun, and then they kind of that, that it all teeters out. But uh, that was a good, not cool, Jordan, for sure. Uh, our next not cool is from Josh Tree Cottle. Uh, Robert, will you put this up on the screen for the YouTube version? He's at Joshua Tree seven one three on Twitter, and Josh says his not cool is when you're torching out some metal and it creates a lava looking bob- bubble that pops all over you. He uh, then proceeded to show us his arm, and he's just got nice little like like blister freckles. It looks like Josh, I love him. you, but I swear to God, you are OSHA's nightmare. But also. Oh, who looks great over pick like because he's, I know that, but great pick also because he's wearing his like gravy that. gang shirt. So we love you, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Always on rapping. the plus, hey, Josh, you might have burned your arm, but on the plus side, side, it looks like you did not get any holes in your dope ass t shirt. So that's pretty cool. In your dope ass t shirt or in your eye. I know he's got stuff with his eye before. So shout out to you for not getting that. The also, P's maybe, P's, dude, that does suck. You have maybe, like a real man job. That Maybe sucks. when you see it start to bubble up, back away. Maybe try you that. The guy that does it for a living, I advise on. Yes, bro. Have you ever met me? Yeah. All, all, sure. all I do is give advice on shit I don't know. How many times have I given parenting advice on this podcast? How many times have I given well, relationship advice? We are, we're our parents, Scott and Lester. I am podcast a white stuff. guy on a podcast. All I do is talk about shit I don't know about. Not enough of those podcasts out there, really, honestly. I mean... Uh, but that does suck. T's and P's, Josh. T's and P's, bro. Um, Mike Fish gives us our next Not Cool. He's at Only Mike Fish. He's also the host of the Waffle Box podcast. If you're looking for something else to listen to after this is over. And Claire and Big Blue podcast. We're going to hopefully be back next week. 
Um, our schedules just haven't matched up, but Mike Fish says his not cool is going to a BYOB place and they charge five dollars for a Coke. I bought my own I brought my own beer, so I didn't it didn't affect me, but still you fucking charge five dollars for a can of Coke. I think we also New York we City have prices. to I was gonna say that's what we have to it's New York City. That's that we have to preface that. In in Houston, that would be inexcusable. Well, places Up are there. BYOB for a reason, usually, though. A lot of places are BYOB because they're making their money somewhere else. And it's like, I get it. It's shitty as fuck. That that fucking sucks. I hate it when you go places like that. But, like, like when it, there's some crawfish places. Like, you can bring your beer, but, like, the crawfish is typically more expensive. Yeah. Because that's... they're making up for not selling alcohol at that. And they also didn't have to give a, an alcohol price. That's – it's something that, like, if you've never worked at a BYOB place, you don't understand – you lose so much money not selling liquor. It's like, it's crazy that there are still BYOB places that exist. Like, I I, I don't know the numbers because I don't look into them and they want to give them to me if I asked anyway because that's not where I'm at in the company. But the fact, I do know that the fact that there are BYOB places, it's crazy that they can operate. There's a reason there's Y'all very, used to very be BYOB, right? Yeah. There's reasons that there's very few of them left anywhere because just selling liquor that can and often is the difference between your business failing. The margins are just so any, good on liquor and not watch any liquor. episode of Bar Rescue. How does he save a bar? John Tappers, as, as an expert, has watched like almost all of the episodes of Bar Rescue. I feel like John Tappers' method is go into a bar. This bar mostly sells beer. Cool. Shut it down for a couple of days. Teach people how not to be pieces of shit, like staff members. And then also, by the way, we're going to make you three new signature cocktails. This is an espresso martini. It's now $29. This is a Long Island iced tea. It's now $29. This is a vodka, whatever. It's $29 because it's got a little lime peel twisted up all cool on top. We're going to charge them a lot for really fancy, cool looking alcoholic drinks that are made with liquor. So then we make like, nine thousand percent on each sale and that's pretty and, much what like how, how bars make their money and you have to deal with the fact or that any establishment people find out your byob and look sweet i can drink for free and they show up with a bottle it's of the wine worst and, kind like, of people. And, and, and you're like oh no but it's not like, that mike's the worst you're not the and, worst but like no and, the, but the then, byob guy is the worst people show up and they're like for many years ours was a nine dollar fee if you're gonna bring your own bottle or your own six pack it's it's gonna we're gonna charge you nine dollars then it became 12, and then it became 20. And people are like, oh, that's outrageous. You're charging me $20 to bring my own bottle of wine in? And I had to explain to many tables. And I go, okay, well, how much did you pay for your bottle? $60? So now we're charging you 20 Okay, if you were to buy that bottle here in the restaurant, it would cost you $180 for that bottle. Usually that's at, like liquor is upcharged two to three times most of the time it's three times of what it costs us because that's what it costs because you don't understand we're going to pay staff we you're about pay bottle service, you realize. we got to pay our cable bill we got to pay uh electricity like you got to pay everything else you're bringing in and or people would bitch oh this bottle cost me 20 dollars to buy i gotta pay 40 for it here yes because it would cost you 60 dollars and then that's that's another reason a lot of places get rid of BYB and they go to liquor. It's like I don't want to deal with customers that bitch that there's a fee for them to drink for free in my establishment. And then they're already mad, and then they're going to drink a lot to try and be like, "Well, I have twenty. I had to pay twenty dollars. I'm going to finish this here." And you're like, uh, "And which well, by the you're way, finishing your bottle of wine, and now you're drunk, and now I have to deal with a drunk person because like BYOB typically people think like means I can just go get wasted there because I'm bringing my own booze. So it's like. I'm not saying that like Mike is bad clientele, but I'm saying the type of clientele it generally attracts is not normally like yeah. the greatest. And and if you're BYOB, it's not, you're not an expensive restaurant. You're not making your money. Like you're not you making high money. margins yeah, on yeah. food. Like you're not selling $40 dishes generally if you're BYOB. Like I had to explain to a guy one time, he got mad. He's like, so if I, so for my bottle of wine, I got to pay $20. I was like, yes. He's like, if I brought in a six pack, it would still be $20. I was like, yeah. You can also bring in a bottle of Macallan 15 and I'm only going to charge you $20. When, if you bought a Macallan 15 from us, it's going to cost you $20 for a shot. You can bring in a 
that's just the price, dude. I just fucking work here. Like I, I had to right. talk I this guy off this ledge. Rule. And eventually he understood. He's like, okay, well, like, I guess that makes sense. And I was like, dude, just just don't be an asshole to the staff. Even to the managers. Don't be an asshole to the managers. Because guess what? They don't set the fucking prices either. They fucking right. work there. I get it. But dude, like I get it. it and, does, also, and also it's not cool and also for Mike, when they charge that shit. You live in New York, dude. I'm shocked five dollars for a Coke isn't just standard in New York at this point. It's so expensive to live everywhere. But in New York, it's like 10x. I'm not shitting on Mike's not cool. I no, feel I was just, just trying to give him another perspective. That is that like I would also be like, fuck, it's five dollars for a Coke. Are you fucking serious? Like I feel like I, I just unloaded some of my own shit on reaction. Mike. <laughs> no, I got I you. would I would too. But like there are there are reasons for it. It's just like like my not cool, there's reasons for it. But like it's frustrating when you're in the situation where you're like, this is bullshit. Just but, hey, appreciate that yeah, you have a spot sucks, that's dude. BYOB. Just appreciate that. And maybe, you know, just get a fucking water. No, that that felt bad. I there shamed you. Mike on that. I'm sorry. I love you, you, Mike. I love you, Mike. You're a good guy. We were you got not a, shitting on you. You got a great accent and it's sexy as fuck. We're trying to I'm trying to get him to come down to Texas and hang for a little bit. I would fucking um, Ashley, love that. Ashley Wilkins at Buster Healer Mix gives us our final listener viewer submitted. Not cool. And she says, my headphones breaking off inside my phone are her not cool. Oh. She sent us a picture. Robert, if you will throw uh, that up on the YouTube version as well, youtube.com slash Pascari Podcast. Just search Pascari Podcast on YouTube. Please subscribe. Um, but yeah, so she has the USB C. What is it? No, no that's the lightning. Would- that's the lightning. The lightning port. She has the <laughs> lightning port that you get to plug into your phone for the. Uh, I thought she was gonna say it was jammed. At least it came out for I the headphones. It, I thought it was like stuck in there and jammed. At least I she had got a roommate. It out. I had a roommate get a. Uh, he had a headphone jack though, and we had to do like surgery with needle nose pliers to pull that bitch out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she said that it broke off. I think it did. I think it did break off in her phone. And she probably had to pull it out. But um, it is the little lightning port. The little like chip part that you plug in on an iphone and that broke off in the phone not having headphones when you need headphones and this is right before she was listening to the spooky episode there's nothing worse honestly that's not that's the spooky that makes the podcast even spookier i would imagine ashley uh i'm sorry this this seems like a plus to me though she was in the school lounge play us all for everyone i know teachers they're fucked up people they would love us we gotta find a way to like i don't know are we are we still posting on tiktok yeah, clips, dude. Start. They don't, start don't like tagging us on TikTok as much though. They're very just, mean. Start. Start tagging everything. Teacher TikTok. Teachers are fucked up people. I think they would enjoy. We got to find a way to target teacher teachers. Teacher. If talk, anybody else know. would also just go on our TikTok uh, app, Ashley, Pod, and just be like, "These guys are hilarious." Just say like I, some variation of that to help with the trolls because the trolls are usually like these guys are the two biggest idiots ever. I'm like, well, yeah. stop being mean, kid. Ashley, you probably know some like tags that work for teachers send it over to us well, i think teacher teachers are fucked up people they're teachers are like me but a lot of the time younger they're just drinking all the time and getting through the day just getting through the day aren't we all aren't we all um, that's, not, that's cool, actually, actually not a bad shirt that I does suck a shirt that just says just getting through the day <laughs> that's a solid idea with, with just a fucking um, all right pint glass on there I'll go first. My I had I had one not cool, but I think Pat's gonna. It's kind of similar with Pat's so, though. Um, I was on a plane on the way back from Mexico. Can't really bitch about coming back from like a cool resort, but um, just like plane sickness, you know, like with that circulated air. Obviously, somebody was sick on the plane. I got stuffy on the plane, and I just had kind of gunk in the oh. back of my fucking throat and on my in my nose all week. So like that's not cool. I'm gonna push back. But, like, you didn't get sick. Happens. You got a little stuffy. You didn't get sick. All right, whatever. But it's like that yeah, plane, like you're like, I felt I started feeling like groggy after that, but like I'm good. Wait, did I'm you good. miss work? Um no. You weren't I sick. Miss work. I don't I like, unless, unless ground, I actually, took a little day quill, I was fine. Unless it causes you to miss work, I don't think you're sick. People like I got a cold, but I went to work. Okay, you weren't sick. You were under the weather. You were a little stuffy. That's we're always sick. under the weather. We've already gone over that. Now, 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 wait till you have kids. You're below clouds. That's, you're that's, under the weather. T- talk to a parent. Hey, I don't, I, I haven't felt good from the, my child's age of one to 12. Cause they're just germ monsters. 
you just all right well you, you roll with it baby so that was my like first one and then um my real not cool is emma was stuck at work a little bit late this week and she was like hey can you go grab this for dinner and then also get like i had to get dog food i had to get two things for dinner and then i had to go get something uh that i was gonna pick up and i was just running to the grocery store and I was like, boom, all right. And like, like I love like knowing where shit is in the grocery store, just being like, boom, okay, so here, then I got to go there, then I come back, and then I go to the checkout, done. Super easy, in and out. I walked in, and there's all this shit out in the middle of the store, and they're rearranging all the aisles. And I know they got to do that because then they want, like, the B.O.B. explanation for that is, well, Alex, they have to go, and they want people to go look at different sections that they may not have normally looked at, so then maybe they buy more and they can make more money. I understand that, but I was like, I'm going in to grab like three, four things. And it was just like, fuck, where is the dog food now? The dog That's food the reason. Here. Why is it by the milk now? Why is it here now? Now the dinner stuff used to be here, but they moved it all the way over here. And I was just like so mad. And then just kind of had, to, I did the, like, I did for the first time maybe in my life. I just was like, just got to 10 real fast. This is a normal thing. I can't be mad at these people for doing their job. And I'm like, God damn, where's the fucking dog food? And I, I, I got it. I got through it. It was fine. It just took a little bit longer. But like, that was the worst. Is it not the worst when you go to your grocery store for the first time or any store you're used to? You're like, ha ha, milk's here. This is here. Cereal's over here. Like, what? Where did all this stuff go? At R H E B. What if I need five hour energies? Do y'all still have those? At R H E B, Sam uh, gets as asparagus every week. And it used to just be like in the middle of the aisle, just like with, uh, with uh, like Brussels sprouts and whatever. But instead, they move the asparagus to like the shelf area and on the top shelf. And Sam's not very tall, so she has to like climb <laughs> just to get the asparagus. Now, yeah, bro, you sucks. just you just broke my brain. I never thought of it that way. They're trying to get you to look at more products. That makes sense. I've always thought because you go to where the dog food ain't, was. If and it you're ain't like ain't charcoals broke. here, I do need charcoal. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why would you rearrange the store? My thought was always like, well, it actually makes more sense of these. Okay, it might make more sense, but it was already here and I knew where it was. So like that was fine. I used to get mad that all HEBs and all Kroger's weren't laid out the same way. But it makes sense. Rearrange it a little bit so people go to one section and go, oh, oh but you know what? I might want to get this too. It drives sales. It drives sales. That makes so much no, no. stuff. Don't, I'm with you. If you go, it's, like, it's, Emma it's infuriating. When shit changes and you don't know where it is, because Emma's not like me. This makes uh, so like much when I go sense. to the grocery store, I'm like, "Huh, what am I gonna get?" And like, I kind of have an idea, but Emma has like a list, and every Monday she wow. goes and she's like, "We go to this out first, this, this, this." Like going with her on, on Mondays when she's doing the grocery shopping is wild. It's just it's watching somebody with like a method to her madness, and she's like, "We go to this out first, then this, and this, and this, and this." And I was even asking her yesterday. She's like, "Yeah, it was frustrating. It was not cool, but it's like." It just cuts down on your time because, like, I am all about like speed when I go there. Like, that's why I would win supermarket sweep. I'm the best at that shit. I I'm very aware of my surroundings and all that. I go in, I go out. Like, I'm not hanging out in the grocery store, and that's why they do that. Because then you're gonna be like, I wanted to buy toothpaste, but now eye drops here. You know what? I did need eye drops. Let me grab some eye drops. Oh, I could grab another stick of deodorant, and like, that's that's the logic to it. But it just sucked in that instance when I was just trying to go get shit. So anytime they rearrange your grocery store and you got to like learn the new layout, not cool. That's, I mean, this isn't not cool. I'm going to add this now. Not cool is now I can't get mad at them for it because now I understand it. I mean, also <laughs> see get angry with it BYOB. To I'm trying to BYOB myself. X BYOB explanation myself, and that I was really never... what I had to do. But I was like, it's still frustrating. I had never gotten there in my head. I've never been able to understand why they would do it other than, you know, it like it makes more sense, but, but, but like it already made sense. It already did. Why would you do that? They're driving sales. Whole, right. I, I would have never gotten there. I would have never gotten there in my brain. That's why they did it. That makes so much sense. Uh, what do you guys, you're not cool. You want to go, Robert? I got a couple. The velvet underground. That sounds like a fucking strip club. That's a band, a rock band. Um, in the 70s? Oh, Robert. Right, Look at Robert. He's cool. the Christian right, just hating rock music. <laughs> um, the devil's music. I heard one of their songs on an episode of a, of a show that I was watching. I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. Like, I'll maybe check it out. And then I 
was watching like a some video where they talked about the episode and he mentioned that song and like that's one of their favorite bands i'm like okay you know what I, i'm not like closed off i'll check it out I'll see i'll see what they're up to or what they're like um terrible not great <laughs> this is another folklore taylor swift situation when that album came out everyone was raving about it. everyone's talking about like oh this is the best album ever and i'm like okay taylor swift i don't listen to her but people keep talking about this album I'm like i'll give it a shot See, I listen to it. To it. <laughs> yep, I listened to it. Terrible. I thought I was done with this, but Taylor he, Swift fans are, at, are are college football fans. It's just their college football is Taylor Swift. Same person. It's just guys and gals. I don't know. I remember like people really hyping up and talking about this album. Yeah, be, because they're Taylor yeah, they Swift were. fans. But I, I couldn't and, and, name and everything she does is the greatest thing ever. But I couldn't name Call, another album after that. I couldn't name any of her fucking albums. That's the only one I can name because that's what people were talking about. I can name songs. I can name one song. You can name more than one song. Or maybe you couldn't name them, but if I told you, you would know them. Okay, fucking maybe you wouldn't. You're a goddamn unicorn. You're so unplugged from everything. I fucking envy you so much. I, mean, I do You like guys that. don't even know who this Velvet Underground is. So no, like, no. Once you, said it's a, once you said it's a band, I was like, no, I have heard that. I wouldn't. Maybe if I heard some of their songs, like I probably wouldn't know the names. If I heard it, I'd be like, oh, I've heard that song, but I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. I have heard of them before, though. I know Lou Reed would always do that. I think it was those VH1 shows where like they would be like, oh, you know, I, back in that time it was this. And he was the singer, I think, for him. He was oh, like he was the okay, black, I, black I, guy. Okay, I know the yeah, I know yeah. the name Lou Reed. I know Lou Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I, what, like what was I can't remember the name from Black the guy so, from Black Flag, but he was like this, he was the radio host for all of like half of the um GTA stations on Grand Theft Auto. Ah, like cool. half the radio stations there. I love that Robert's not cool was I listen to new music. Didn't care for it. New music from 19 like 70. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a 2015 remaster. So you know still a little modern. Oh there you go. Okay. Oh, so, so as long so, as they remaster so, it. So it was Taylor's version. It may have been <laughs> That's all you got? You no, just, all, no, also, you heard some music you didn't like. <laughs> no, it's you know starting. It was cold last week. It's not cold right now, but it's gonna get colder again or cooler, and it, that means drier air, and that means like my around my mouth gets really flaky, and I hate it. Get some chapstick, dude. Drink water. No, Literally, it's not, just drink not water. my lips. I don't. I'm not gonna put chapstick. I mean, like around my mouth, like around the corners of my my nose, and then like underneath my mouth, like kind of. Bro, on my get chin. yourself some. Get yourself some take cups and just drink some water. I drink water all the time. Doesn't help. <laughs> so now I, I get like ashy skin and flakes all over my mouth. Anywhere else my body would be fine with. But like when I'm talking should, to someone and they're you know, looking like directly right at me. You should I need to like, carry lotion with me all the time. There's not enough room in my pockets. You should just be like, hey, say, babe. <laughs> hey, babe. My the mouth bed. is getting flaky. I need a little moisture. Give me a smooch. <laughs> just, just, just like that. <laughs> She's like, oh, hey, I'm getting a little dry over here. I need a little smooch. Just a little... <laughs> that's that's actually hilarious to me. Just thinking of Robert being like, I need a kiss. I'm a little a little dry over here. It's not my lips, Pat. I know, but it's just funny to me. I know. I understand what you're saying. I've created a scenario Do you? in my head that it's funny Because you're me. like, yo, get chapstick. I'm going to tell Sam to kiss you. I know. No, I'm just saying I, I created a scenario in my head that's so funny that that's all I can think about now. <laughs> I'm sorry that's happening to you, Robert. It's the worst. That does suck. <laughs> does all right. Suck. I got a few. Uh, I'll start off with this one. Uh, I'm a Zen guy now. I haven't stopped hipping. I've just added another vice in my life. Yeah. I uh, I was like, well, you know what? Hey, 
I was dipping a lot, especially uh, it really happens a lot during football season. Pat, Pat, hold on, um, hold on. I just received a text from Sam, who is right next to me. She could have just said this. She said, maybe if your bulge wasn't so big, you'd have space in your pants to carry pocket lotion for your face. Did Robert just humble brag having a huge cock? Dad, Robert for being so fucking hung. I don't. Robert's rocking I don't a think, hog. I don't think she sent that text. I think Robert just tried to humble brag dropping his huge cock into the podcast. No, I, I would never. On. Put Sam I would, on. I would never say Put these Sam words. On. No, you didn't say the Put words. I said them. You were inferring Robert, them, knowing that I would say them. Robert, what? there's only one way to sell this, Robert. Robert, your microphone, bigger or smaller? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you gotta just whip it out. That's just that, whip it out. That's for the YouTube listeners, Robert. Just bigger or smaller than your microphone? Okay, Sam can hear you now. Sam, <laughs> bigger or smaller than <laughs> bigger or smaller than his microphone? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, she had, to, she, had to, she, she had to think about it. She had to think about it for a second. Damn, Robert. The wit. Oh, Damn, son. The wit of the microphone Robert. is a uh, is is a bit larger. The length is a different story. A bit? That's a big ass microphone. A bit? Can she see the screen? What are we talking here? <laughs> <laughs> Robert's got fucking two Coke cans in his pants and he's been hiding it from us all these years. No wonder Robert <laughs> never wears sweatpants. Robert's so uncomfortable. <laughs> he's so uncomfortable right now, I feel. All right, all right. All right, right uh, pe petition to make cool? Robert's new nickname the hog. <laughs> <laughs> Robert the okay, hog Barbosa. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll move past this. I know Robert is hating every second of this. Feel real uh, shame if everybody just said appreciate uh, congratulations on your hog, Robert at Robert Barbosa Real, real yeah, shame. Um, yeah, just uh, <laughs> I, I added another vice in. I'm buying Zen now too. Uh, I'm part of the Zen Sam. Am I not cool? Is that my dick's not as big as Robert's now? Yeah, fuck, dude. Like, Robert has the I'm, biggest dick out of all of us now. Obviously, <laughs> shit. I didn't think I was the biggest, but now I know I'm not. Fuck. Um, yeah. I'm winner, winner, You're chicken zen zinner. I'm zinning up now. Uh, that's one. I'm spending more money that I don't need to be spending too. Explain like to those that that may not know what zins are. Real fast. Zin like, is, like, it's zin, just. like. Explain like we're five. Uh, it's. So, like, Dip also has always had pouches where it's just, like, a little container. Here, if you're watching the YouTube, this is what it looks like. It's, like, a little pouch. You just throw it up in That's your fucking watch. lip. And it's just it's just a little nicotine pouch. You don't have to spit with it. It's not as gross. Leaving fucking... I've got a gross Dip spit bottle sitting right here. It grosses me out, too. But, uh, so, yeah, you don't have to spit. But it just it's nicotine that gets you right away. Um, I mean, that's really it. It's literally just a little pouch of nicotine that... But you get to say fun little Zen puns with it. So that's cool. Yeah. Like you've been um, doing, yeah. But I'm just spending, I just, always, I always find more ways to spend money that I don't need to. I fucking hate it. And I'm so dumb. I just, like, if I just looked into my, like, if I made a spreadsheet of my spending, 80% of it outside of bills is just unnecessary. It's It'd be so like Michael dumb. Scott, like, why did you buy two magic sets? Pretty much. Like, if anybody looked at my screen, <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, there's two people in your house. Why do you have three goddamn cable boxes? Well, because two of them are for me, for sports. So I watch sports. And then I also yeah. buy tobacco. But then I also buy Zins. But then I also buy booze. But I buy multiple types of booze. It's the dumb And then from time to time, I buy cigars. It's the dumbest shit ever. Uh, that then also, uh, yeah, last couple of days, I've just been, uh, I, I've been really nasal. I don't know why I have a bunch of mucus in my head. I felt like I had a 20 pound head today. It sucked two days in a row because I'm not an adult. I had to text my GM on his way and be, Hey, can you bring me a uh, chapstick? Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're an adult who's got children. You probably had mucus pills at your home. Can you bring me one two days in a row? I meant to buy it on the way home. Guess what? I didn't do buy it on the way home. I'm going to text him again tomorrow. I'm going to text him again tomorrow. But can you bring me another one? 
because I'm a 33 year old fucking child that doesn't know how to buy his own medication because I'm a fucking idiot. And then also, I was just yesterday at work. I was like, I feel weird. He was like, what? I was like, oh, I never have medication in my system outside of alcohol. This feels weird to me. <laughs> he was like, he was like, is it affecting you? I was like, no, I just feel weird. It's just, I don't it's think you should mix it with feeling. alcohol. Well, I don't do that till I get home. I don't affect my work. Okay. <laughs> and my final okay. one, I'm, uh, I had to go get something today for work. I'm driving back to work in the van. And uh, the traffic light that I'm at, it stacks up. And the car in front of me, I'm probably 15 cars deep. The car in front of me doesn't move until there's li- probably like seven car lengths in front of them. That they weren't paying attention. And we start to go. We're going to make the light, though. They are almost to the, you know, the, the three white lines at the crosswalk. They're getting right there and the light turns yellow. They slammed on their fucking brakes to not go through a yellow. We both would have cruised through it easily before the red even comes. They slammed on it. I slam on my brakes. The truck behind me slams on their brakes and almost hits me. And now it makes me pose this question. It's a woman in a BMW. Women out there. This is the question for the women. Do you get mad? Not BMW drivers? See- no, not BMW women. Do you get mad when you see this shit? Do, do women get mad when they see women be terrible drivers? Because it makes guys with caveman brains like me go, fucking women! Fucking woman! Dri-. Like, do you get mad when you see women be terrible drivers as a woman? Because you're like, you're just perpetuating the stereotype. Like, that, that to me was inexcusable to where the light turned yellow and they were at the fucking precipice of driving through the intersection and they slammed on their brakes for a yellow that drives me insane i want to hear from the women out there does that make you as mad as it makes me like i and i don't even think it's a misogynistic thing when i see that and i go fucking women drivers because the stereotype is there for a reason don't get me wrong i get just as mad at guys when they do this shit i i rail about driving Usually when I that's how I feel drivers, about when they th- when I see a racist or a homophobe, I'm like, I am not that. And you making people think that I could even be that. That's what makes me mad. That's what I say. Well, when people aren't supporting women, that's what I also feel that way, too. I, mean, I would say my driving anger is not misogynistic at all. How many times have I brought up shit that makes me mad in traffic? And I, I don't bring up sex. Anymore. I know I just say drivers like they, they make me fucking mad. I always say. Everyone is so bad at driving. I don't understand it. Driving is so easy. It's so easy. I've driven so many times just hung over and my brain's not working and my brain is on absolute autopilot and I can still just fucking go. I have to know, do women get just as mad as I do when they see bad women drivers? Because you're, like, you're like, God damn it. Like you're the ones that give us a bad name. Cause I know so many women drivers that are good drivers. I should have just said women that are good drivers. Danica Patrick. She was, I mean, she's actually a very good driver, but in the terms of Great sport, driver. she wasn't. Well, but I just, we were not talking about racing. Robert, ask. You seen she's next turn you, signal ask, turn on before? Robert, ask Sam. Don't Robert, ask her any more questions. Does she yeah. get yeah. mad? I'm not Sam going to more questions. God damn Sam's it. already done enough for this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> just give it Robert just, a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Pete Davidson Barbosa over here. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, I want to know. Probably won't get any fucking answers. If we, if we do, I'm bad at fucking. Did you not DMs honk at her mentions. when you saw that she wasn't going? No, because I'm in the company van. Oh, and here's what made me yeah, mad. The, the light turned green and she gunned it. I was like, you couldn't do that fucking two minutes before? I'm trying to get back to work. We're busy. And I got to sit through another fucking light cycle. I, I dude, there was so many. I was so fucking mad. I was seeing. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I was very mad. So, guys, everybody, guys, gals, just, just be, just driving's easy. Just be better. Just be better. Just be better. It's just like the Middle East. Just chill out. Be better. I mean, if she had a football right, game to get to, she might have driven better. Maybe. Maybe. Um, All right. Final segment of the show, the answers segment. 
where we encourage you to ask us any questions at all. We pitch our business ideas in the beginning. It's that big, big business segment we do in the pre chem segment. Um, we encourage you to ask us any question. You got a high thought you, you want to ask us? Hit us up. You want some parenting advice? Some medical advice? We got your relationship advice. We got you there too. Send us some things to Power Rank. We love Power Ranking things. We're the best Power Ranking people of all time. So hit us up with... Uh, Five similarly related things. We'll power rank the fuck out of them. They'll be the best power rankings ever. Um, any other like high thoughts, strong thoughts, any questions you see that you want to have us answer at Pass Gray Pod, use the hashtag PTG answers to at Pass Gray Pod. That's how we'll search for them on Twitter. You can also email them to us, answers at passgraypod.com. I do have a weird email question uh, from a no name email, but um, at Pass Gray Pod on Twitter, and then email them to us, answers at passgraypod.com, or uh, just go to contact us on our uh, on our website, passgravypod.com. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Pass the Gravy. Merch is our official sponsor of this. I didn't write down a sponsorship, but Pass Gravy Merch, we're going to have new shit, Christmas sweaters, and 10th anniversary spooktacular shirts available in the next week. So keep refreshing the store. Go to the store every day. Give us clicks on that store. PassGraveMerch.com. PassGraveMerch.com. Hit us up if you got your answers, questions, answers at PassGravePod.com for the emails, or just hit us up on Twitter. We're at PassGravePod. Here's the hashtag PTG answers. This is the answers segment. Any questions? All right, our first question this week comes to us. From our reigning past the gravy MVP, Raymundo Benavidez at Kmundo B on Twitter. And Mundo says, Would you rather drink the same thing for the rest of your life or eat the same thing for the rest of your life? And I'm assuming this means it's the only thing you can drink or eat. I would go drink and I would drink water. Same. Exactly the same. Oh, I'm going to say eat because. You could only eat one thing forever. So so you never want to drink Southern Star again? I would love to drink Southern Star again, but if I could only drink one thing, water keeps me alive, and I could always be alive and eat anything I wanted. Yeah, but I'd rather eat one thing and drink everything I wanted. I mean, obviously, this what is who I you am pick? as a person. What would you pick? If I could only, food, all, you pick, then? only eat one you thing for the rest of my life? It. Uh, probably pork. You have to be specific. Pork chops. Just pork chops. Breakfast, pork lunch, chops. dinner every single day. Pork chops. I need my pork. Got to have pork. But uh, this, when is it comes fair, to drinking, I, this is a fairly I, easy one. I love, I love beer. I love whiskey. I love gin. I I love a nice Shirley Temple from time to time. I love a root beer. I love a Dr Pepper. But if I can only eat one thing, I'm cool just eating pork chops. Now, don't get me wrong. It's going to be a problem because if I don't eat carbs, my poops are just yeah. bad. Bad. But I have bad poops all the time anyway. So, like, if I could just eat – dude, if I can just – if all I'm eating is pork chops for the rest of my life, I feel like I'm living pretty fucking good, dude. And when it comes to it, pork is on the lower end of costs on meats. But I there gotta, go. I got, I, I I gotta have a buried hatchet salad. I gotta have a blue uh, bombshell blonde. I gotta have some whiskey. I gotta have a little gin and soda from time to time. A little tequila soda, a ranch water. I gotta have a limeade. I gotta have some lemonade. I gotta have a little sweet tea. Variety is the spice no, I like of all life, of those baby, things. and my life revolves around drinking baby i'm irish you're telling me i as an irish dude i mean i guess you could still smoke weed but like you could you never go to it. somebody's house for dinner like if robert invited us over for dinner which he still has yet to do um, I bring like sam created sam has made this fantastic meal and she made an awesome spread and like we you wouldn't get to enjoy any of that you're like oh, i'm actually i brought my pork chops in this bag where I could just be like, uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, no, I'll go get a glass of water. Everybody's got water. It's super Fuck easy, that, and dude. I feel like people wouldn't even notice that you did that. I And I feel like most people would take 
what you said until I laid it out my way. Bro, I got to have my drinks. I got to like, dude, you can't no, have I coffee get that, ever again. But, you wake but, up three o'clock I mean, every morning. You can never have coffee again. I can have again. any food I want, but I could pick whatever breakfast I wanted. Dude, don't, I mean. Donuts, cereal, all I'm, mine. I'm fat, dude. I got to have my food. Use that don't as the screen wrong. grab. I need my food, dude. But like, I need my drinks a little bit more. And I, th- I actually, I think okay. a lot of people would side with me on this because I like think I said earlier, side with us. we're just, you're just trying to make it through the day. And if you can't make it through the day without a buzz at the end of the week, you worked hard all week. You worked with your hands. You're Josh tree. You were in fucking working with a hot molten lava splashing all over your arms. You're burning at the end of the day, lava on your arm. You fucking work 12 hours and you're tired of shit and you get home and you're like, ah, I'm looking to it forward to a nice cold glass of water. That sounds like yeah. literal fucking hell to me. But then I again, smoke a ton of cigarettes. I'm an alcoholic. What are you going to do? All right. That was a good question, Raymundo. Uh, next one. This is from Quentin Hughes at Q the Ace on Twitter. So we got back to back power rankings. Get ready to go. I can go first on this one, but this was an interesting one. He says, "Power rank these Victorian slang words." So we get into some Victorian slang words I didn't even know about. Um, church bell is a talkative woman. Love that. Top of mouse is Victorian slang for black eye. Doddles. Is it is Victorian slang for hands? Half rats is Victorian slang for half drunk, and sauce box is slang for mouth. I'll go first. I'll start with number one. Number one is sauce box because sauce box just sounds fun to say. You just fucking so- shut your fucking sauce box over there. You shut your fucking sauce box. Sauce box is the best name. That's my favorite episode title now. I disagree. The that's first. the best one there, but I just think it sounds cool as fuck. Um, sauce box one, number two. I'm gonna go with Doddles. Put your Doddles up. Just I don't know. Doddles sounds fun to say. These are mostly the funnest sounding words of all of them. Um, three is church bell. I guess it's not the funnest sounding one, but she she was a real church bell over there, wasn't she? Like that's kind of fun, like talking about a dame. I can imagine that dame, a real church bell right there. Now we're right here. Church bell. Um, and then Coppa Mouse. I don't know why it sounds funny, but Half Rats just was my least favorite of those. So I go say, Sauce Box, Doddles, Church Bell, Coppa Mouse, and Half Rats. I'll go next. Half Rats, number one. You're with your boys, what? dude. Bro, bro, I'm Half Rats right now. <laughs> that just that sounds so fucking fun to me. Um, <clears throat> Doddles too, bro. Are you trying to catch these Doddles? Doddles, dude. Watch your mouth, <laughs> or you're gonna catch these Doddles. All right, put those Doddles on. No, put them um, down. Sauce box three. <laughs> sauce box three. Like, bro, you better watch a sauce ma- a sauce box right now, or you gonna catch these Doddles? Sauce box, huh? huh? If you if you're not if you ain't Christmas if you ain't and it's Santa punching somebody in the mouth if you ain't careful with that sauce box you gonna catch these dottles all right such a sauce such a fucking sauce box um church bell is for it's fun I I, I loved it so much because it was the first one I heard but the others are better cop mouse five but just imagine being like listen if you don't watch your sauce box you're gonna catch these dottles and get in cop a mouse okay. Hold on, let me try how'd and get, put that. How'd you cop a mouse? From me, uh, I got, got these dawdles, and now I got I got these dawdles. I was running my sauce box a little too much. Oh, I cut church bell. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and make this British real quick. Give me a second. It's I gotta prepare myself because I'm laughing really hard just even thinking about it. Oh, I cut. You don't watch a sauce box. You go on kids. <laughs> God damn it! I can't do it. Hold on. I got this. I got this. I got this. You don't watch a sauce box. You're gonna catch these dawdles. Get yourself a <laughs> couple mouse. Fuck, I that's as best as I can do. That's as best as I can do. That made me laugh a lot. I love that. But that's that's my answer. Robert, what about you? I'm going with Doddles, number one. I like the catch these Doddles. Doddles. It's just it's catch fun, dude. Doddles. The alliteration in it, man. I'm gonna go sauce box number two. Cop of mouse number three. Half rats number four. 
and church bell lasts. I'm not really a religious guy. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's because you're a feminist. Fair. You want women talking. <laughs> Which is the religious thing. <laughs> that was just a fun one because it was so random. And I feel like I had not used that one for a while. And it was just like, you know what? Let's let's get into the Victorian slang today. That's a really interesting one. And those are the power rankings I like. I like those power rankings. Um, Quentin, great job on those, buddy. Uh, at QDAs on Twitter. Let's move on to our next power rankings. This is from our good buddy. Alex O at Alex McThunder one on Twitter and Alex O says power rank these hats. He gives us, he doesn't just give us a ball cap. I guess that would have been obvious. Number one, but he gives us fedoras fez hats, which are those like Shriner hats. You know what that means? Robert, do you know where? Yeah, I looked it up. Okay. I don't. Okay. I was like, I don't know. Robert doesn't know things. Sometimes I'm trying to make sure he's aware. Deer um, stalker slash Sherlock Holmes hats. I didn't know what a Deerstalker hat was. I looked at it I was like that's what Sherlock. That's what, that's what my boy uh, Sherlock's yeah. rocking uh, so the, with like the thing on top. Um, so Sherlock Holmes hats, flat caps, and then beanies. Um, who wants to go first on this one? I'll go first. All right. Uh, flat cap one. It's a hard look to rock, but if you can wear it well, the flat cap is a classic look. Not many people can rock it though. You just look Most weird rocking it. There's about a ten percent. Group of the population they can. You I, don't think you can. No, don't think I don't think I can. I've I, I've worn a couple at times and in the right situation, it's okay. Um but a almost, Kangle does, does not count as a flat cap. No, 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 Kangle it doesn't. It it almost does has count. to be semi-ironic, but like you it, it, and what helps it is sometimes if you wear it Samuel L. Jackson style and throw it backwards, it'll help a little bit on there. Uh, I'm gonna go flat cap one, be beanie two. It's comfort and uh, utility. Yeah, the beanie the beanie gets the job done. It's a it, it's a good one. Uh, three, I'm gonna go Fez. That's just a like nobody can rock it, but dudes that do, you're like you're 85 years old, and that's fucking dope. Like, why was that the hat that the Shriners picked? Like, what if we had a hat that like it's a graduation cap? Like, why is this the hat? Fe- was the, was fa- weird. Like, fashion was weird back in the day, dude. Fashion was weird back in the day. This. Uh, Fez three, Deerstalker four, Sherlock Holmes rocked it. I don't think it's a modern hat that can really be rocked anymore. The four doors five. There's no. The only people that will still try and rock a fedora. The same people that can pull up a flat cap are the same. Like it's ten no, percent of the population can do it. Way no, more people do it than should. No, there are far more people that can pull off the flat cap than the fedora. Disagree. The fedora, there's like. I think there's like nine people on the planet that can pull off a fedora. No, there's more. It's, than that, it, but it's no, a there's not. Though. No, there's not. There really is mm-hmm. not. It's. I'm actually the, the authority fe- on hats. The fedora is a bad hat, and the only people that will try and rock it are like music industry guys that are are trying to make a fashion statement. The fedora is not a good hat. It's just not. It's like, and there, there's always the. Oh fucking neckbeards wearing a fedora online being fucking incels. Yeah, that's a, obviously a horrible look. But there's like like you'll see Bruno Wa- Bruno Mars wearing a fedora and you're like, "All right, you rock that." But you're just fucking hot. Like that's where like people that are super hot can rock it and make it look good cuz super hot people make everything look good. But there's I'm telling you there's like nine people on British the planet people. that can wear it. Like, I bet you, so. okay, uh, no, no, they cannot. No, they cannot. It's like the Most... only two people that come to my mind that could probably rock a fedora are Bruno Mars and Justin Timberlake. Nobody else off the top of my head can rock one. Michael Jackson. Oh, he's dead. They could rock that fuck out of a fedora. Well, okay, so you're there. Three. So there's eight people the on guy the, from unsolved, the guy from Unsolved Mysteries. He would always have like, any detective ever. No, see, I think the detectives need to wear the deer stalker. Sherlock yeah, Holmes. No, style. that's that's old. They can tr- they they can tr- they can try New the school. fedora. They can't wear that. They should just go with the deer stalker. But, Driving crew. Yeah. No. If you know, you know. The driving crane hat, it's required. You gotta wear a fedora. But there should only be one driving crooner. 
So that's number I think it, I mean, four. You got to learn how to make money off of it. There should be more people doing that. No, it's simply no, too no. good. That's why more people don't do it because not everyone can rock it. So that's four people right there. That's my list. What do you guys got? Robert, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, my number one is a beanie. Comfort. Respect. That's utility. Perfect. Yeah, almost everyone can rock it. And then number two, I'm going to go fedora. Oh, Robert, it, that's so a, bad. It's a hard oh, look to pull so off. so bad. Hard look to pull off. But, but if you can, it yeah, looks cool as fuck. It does look really cool. Right? Yes. The few, the proud. The fedora. The fedora. No. Have you ever seen a guy that pops in a fedora? You're like, that guy. No. Fucking no. I, I would. I saw a guy I've one time at a bar. He was wearing one. And I was. Granted, I was very drunk at this bar. It was at uh, what's it was Baker Street and Katie. Baker Street and Katie. I was there. That I saw is a guy not the a spot for somebody to rock a fedora. Well, he oh, fucking I would... rocked it. It was like an older guy. And I was like, bro, I just want to say you're maybe the only person I've ever seen pull off a fedora. And it that's and that's was an like, older guy. Thank you. Just and then I drunkenly walked back to the bar. Girl. I didn't ask what he was doing there. I just told him he could pull it off and he did. All right. Yeah, he's got the like if he, Like I think the if only If you ever see a guy wearing a if you if you ever see a guy wearing a fedora that's pulling it off, you have you are required by law to go tell him that he's looking great in it because most people are not. And if you're wearing a fedora and no one has said anything to you, don't wear it again. No, you're required to ask him what's the name of his ska band. Number three, I'm going oh, Peter Stalker slash Sherlock Holmes. Thinking about Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. solving mystery, solving crimes. There we go. Detective. He could probably pull off a yeah. fedora. He's hot as shit. Then next, I'm going flat cap, and then last, I do fez. Solid I like your ranking for the Robert. fez. That's a solid place. I really like your ranking. I am uh, just about the exact rankings as you. I went beanie one. It's functional. It looks cool too. Um, I when I had long hair, I always liked to rock those like longer be- beanies that are more like socks because you could like pull your hair back. Oh no like, no that, like, no no! It does no, the like no. stoner bun no. thing kind of. Where, no, that I is the that worst. Cool. That I would put that at six my wife on this fell list for me doing that shit, bro. I would wife, put that my at wife fell for me when I did. Dude, that if shit. you have the baggy beanie, I fucking hate everything you stand for as a person. No, the beanie's not baggy. Your hair is just filling it out, so it looks like it's kind of like rasta y looking, which is cool. No, a beanie is a beanie. It's tight on your head. If you buy a beanie that has enough room for your hair, you live in Seattle, and I fucking still hate counts you. as a still counts as a beanie. beanie no, one. that's not <laughs> number two. Beanie is one. Number two is deer stalker. Um, it's Respect. again functional, functional because deer stalker is for hunters. That's also a hunting. Too, so it's like I for Sherlock Holmes. It's for solving crime and for hunting and keeping warm. You're like, oh shit, I'm a little. You're right. It is cold. Let me undo this, and now uh, I'll tie this up. Now I got little earmuffs right there. My ears, my ears are warm. So it's also, also functional. So beanies I think and deer stalker are two most functional. That's basically Kyle's hat from South Park too. I didn't put those into my calculations. It's no, not. Kyle's but hat it's, is not. It's not, but it's close. It's a, a deer stalker is basically a ball cap. It's just got the other. It's got like the flaps on the side of it. That's true. It's it's not, but it's Kyle's hat is more like a. Bits. Is it like a, a toque? I don't know what they call it. I don't it's know. It's more got the muffs like on the side. Hat. Though, you yeah. only wear it, but it, but it, but it doesn't have the bill. You're right. It's not. You're right. Um, Mia culpa. So deer, beanie one, deer stalker two, three is fedora. Um, I mean, what? It's better. Than, it's better than the two remaining hats. It's better than flat caps. It's better than fez caps. Yeah, it's hard to pull off. But again, when you can pull it off, you can fucking pull it off. You know, but you can't those, when you not me not any of us but when somebody can they can fucking pull it off in you the can, driving crooner i've also i also watched a lot of i think you should leave on the plane so both of y'all can pull place, off flat place. cap 100 percent. no nope. bro nope. if i nope. the flat cap is underappreciated my brother is actually a flat cap guy and he pulls it off he got them from my grandfather Benzie. and you know what no he actually does I, I, I will shit on my brother eight days a week on everything he's fucking a dumbass about. Unless you're trying to Dude. 
dude. No, I'm actually not. Dude, I will never. I will never give my brother compliments to prove a point. <laughs> Ever. I will constantly shit on him every chance I get. He pulls off the flat cap. So I go Fedora three. I just don't think you four. guys have seen anybody that can actually pull off the flat cap. It's not as hard to pull off as people make. No, I have people. I have people that pull off a flat cap. I just think a flat cap's kind of a nothing hat. It's like, why'd you wear a hat? Did you not want to go out? It's warm. A hat? Like it's not a hat. Well, the, and it's here's the thing: there's, su- it's like there's a- summer. No, well, there's summer flat caps and there's Looks winter like a flat caps. On your head. The summer um, flat cap so is yeah. more of a uh, canvas, and the winter is more of a felt. Um. So yeah, flat cap. For Fez is five. Like that, Fez is just the most impractical of all the hats. Like, well, it we, is. Let's but just like put a bucket on our head. But like a dude wearing a Fez, you're like, I respect you. You're 85 years old. A Fez hat is like, like you told a guy to come up with a bucket hat, and like that was his first try that didn't work, and then he was like, bucket hats need to have an edge around it. Boom, bucket hats. Also, like, dude, I like, feel like that's what a, a Fez hat was the failed first attempt at a bucket hat. Bucket hats would have been number one on this list if given the rest of these numbers. The Fez I'll always respect Bug more because because of uh, Indy's buddy from Indiana Jones. Uh, what is it? The uh, what's the Holy Grail one? Apu wore it on Aladdin. He had one. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, dude. Like, it's he could there's rock. Le- it, but like, there's probably ooh, there's a pro- monkey. I would say there's actually more people on the planet. What that is that? A monkey hat? Be- because of the age of the guys that wear it, there's still some of them around. We're getting very close to what's well, only like the, ceremonial. Yeah, it's ceremony. I mean, it's you got to respect the ceremony, man. The fedora, so Beanie, never Deerstalker, be fedora, flat cap, and fez. Those are power ranking hats. Great power rankings to Alex O and to Quentin this week on the podcast. Yeah. Um, next question we got is from Todd Voss at as underscore scene underscore by underscore tv on twitter it's todd boss uh he says what video games would you like to see made into a movie or tv shows um so i'm assuming these can't already be ones that have been made i saw that like zelda they're working on one i immediately just went gta any of the grand theft autos would just be heist movie storylines, specifically Grand Theft Auto V or Vice City. But like Grand Theft Auto V would just be like a heist movie, in which I'd be like, fuck yeah, that's a dude. I feel like I feel like it would have to be Vice City, but I don't think those make good movies or TV shows. Vice City is basically just, Scarface. So like, it's too much. I was gonna say, like, and I know you said you can't say because it's already been made. I'm gonna say it because it wasn't made. Halo. What they, they made, made with Halo? No, no, they did not. No, they did you not. That's not did an not. acceptable answer. Answer they the question. They did not the make exercise. Halo. Declined. No, I, I am respecting the exercise. What ah. they made with Halo, they made an alternate timeline. We didn't ask your Halo. commentary on. We didn't they ask your commentary literally on, took on away every show. defining characteristic of Master Chief. They took every defining characteristic of him and go, right. "Let's fucking reverse it. Answer Let's question, reverse though. it." He's not silent. He's not a leader. Answer the question, he, sir. I was going to have to mute you and let you calm down. All the ones of the, I, I thought Mario, down. we've already got Mario. <sighs> Red, Dead Redemption. Red, Dead Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead would be too. fucking dope. Yeah. But Red Dead. Grand Red Red Auto, but, but, like but, 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 but now with what they did to Halo, I'm worried that they would ruin everything. Like they ruined. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I could rant for fucking 45 minutes about what they did to Halo. I waited fucking 20. Nope, not going to do it. Red Dead Redemption, and I'm going to shut up. Red Dead Redemption's a good one. Yeah, I'm not sure. A lot of the games that I played, they already made movies or are making, like, God of War. <laughs> was it? Oh, it was it uh, The Last of Us. Oh, the Last they of Us, the... they did that. Dude, so, which made me so mad about it. God damn it, I'm going to stop. I keep uh, going back to it. Play Resident Evil, but they've already made a lot of Resident Evil movies. Yeah. Not good ones, but. I, it hasn't one. come out yet, so I think you can say God of War. That's what I'll go with it. God of War. We haven't seen it yet, so mm-hmm. it should. I mean, it's going to be so good too, and it's going to make me even matter about Halo. It will be so good. So we'll God of War, yeah, going God of War. God of War would be good. I think any Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto Five specifically, if I had to pick one, Grand Theft Auto Five might be good as a as like a mini series. I don't think I so. I could see that being like eight episodes because you could have 
like all three characters' lives in it. But like, I, don't... I would watch the fuck out of that movie just because it would be a heist movie. And if you you're like Alex, this is a heist movie. I'm like, I'm in. But like, you're you're doing Grand Theft Auto would, would have to be, be a, a good show. movie. But it'd be it no, have to it be would a good movie. It would have to be a show because you would have to do. It would have to be an eight to somewhere between eight and sixteen episodes, so you can do a different mission every time. But I think the universe of Grand Theft Auto could be so wild that like it's just so crazy. Like, oh, I can just run through the streets mowing people the fuck down, and then just go back to my house and hide behind a wall, and the cops can't find me. Well, that would obviously wouldn't be part of it. Like that, like you wouldn't be doing that shit. It would just be like a high space movie. I'm taking Red Dead, but I'm sticking by Halo. They fucked that up so goddamn bad. Uh, what was the uh, what was the HBO show? It was like Matthew McConaughey was on it with I can't True. remember. And then they had True Detective. They could do a Grand Theft Auto like True Detective style where they had multiple seasons of it, and it's eat like do like four or five seasons of it, and you just do each Grand Theft Auto. And just have a different cast of people on it, like that would be a cool, like well, eight episodes. I'd I'd watch that shit. Also, an easy answer is just making any of the Star Wars games into a video or into a already, show. Already been done. No, 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 no. But the spit like take because the Star Wars games do a good job of taking stories you've never heard before. You could all the games have been so good. You could turn that into a series or use the characters that are in the show into a series. And it like it's still Star Wars, but it's a different story, so that would work well. But that's kind of a cop out answer. We could go off into the Star Wars tangent. I think Red, 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 Red Dead. Red Dead, Red Dead, Dead is, is a good answer. answer. I think our answer. answers are all good answers. Star Wars. The only thing that pisses me off about Star Wars, like right now, is like, and if they did that, then I, that would be like, cool. If you want to get this story, all you have to do is go play this video game. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do that because like that Ahsoka well, girl. I, I was Ahsoka. Like, I, I'm sorry, I didn't watch. I didn't watch 37 years of cartoons about Star Wars to get her backstory. I don't know. But that's also that's also not true because you can even if you watch the show and you see it, it's like, OK, we all watched the movies. But if you didn't watch the Clone Wars, there's a vast amount of story there that you can make video games out of that people haven't seen. Or even like, I, God damn it, you made me do it. This is what the fucking Halo. We all knew all right, the story. Move on. You could have just on. made We're the fucking the story. Right, next question. There's books. The you could have done the books. You could have just done the books, but you know you made it bullshit in an alternate universe that doesn't fucking work and change the characteristics of the characters. All right. Great question. Start the next question Todd. before I keep going. You got people mad, and that's what we're here for. Uh, last question. This is. This is from uh, so the email came in from purple in the shadows. 37 was the email address. Uh, I don't remember if it was at whatever, but purple is person sandwich. This question was left vague on purpose. Okay. So just fa- by fantasy person, fantasy can we just take person that, sandwich. Can we just make that to mean any person that's not real? Pretty much. So what I came up with, because this is what I, I've marinated on it for a second. This email kind of, I was like, I'm not going to use this one. And I was like, you know what? Let's do use this. Because it's like, I was, it was vague on purpose. We'll leave it up to our mind, imagination. Uh, I'm assuming that's meaning that I am sandwiched in between the two of them, a little Alex sandwich. Uh, so the uh, fantasy oh. sandwich would be Hermione Granger and Katniss Everdeen. Oh, little, my fat ass was little, thinking. Little Katniss Everdeen. In Hermione Granger, obviously, at that point, but like, hey, who's saying no? Who's saying no to that? Them. They're saying no to me, oh. but I'm not saying no to that. I like where you went with Little it. Katniss, Hermione, and Alex Sandwich. God, I'm actually, I'm actually shocked I didn't take that sexual with my brain. I'm going to take from Friends, the Moist Maker, Ross's sandwich that got thrown in the trash. That's my favorite fantasy sandwich, so I want to eat that sandwich. Okay, Krabby Patty would be another one of mine then. If we were just fuck the Krabby Patty, I'd, I, I'd rather have the moist. Oh, they, they always made the Krabby Patty look so fucking good, and it's a cartoon. That's it. I mean, it is a respectable answer. I'll take the moist maker. No, that that was also good. That's a good answer. RIP Matthew Perry. Robert, what about you? What I interpreted as was combining like two traits of two different people into me. I love that we all have oh, okay. different interpretations. This is great. That's that. That was why, like, I was like, hold on, let me go put this back in there. Because this is a great. 
I want to do this again. It's next a very week. unique question. Di- I want us all have different answers next week. <laughs> so I just thought it's ridiculous. I'm gonna go Victor Wembiana's height and all right. and Jose Tuve's humility. I don't think you want that actual height though. That makes life super inconvenient, dude. That is yeah. his fantasy. I respect the answer. The fan- I respect it's the, the fantasy. answer. Not real. I'm just saying, in practicality, if you're not in the NBA, that height sucks. You're making you're making sixty five thousand dollars a year. Hopefully, at that height, you're fucking trying to fit your body into a Toyota and Corolla. You're a bitch. You got you. You can't even afford a bed that fits your body. I I but think be humble or dunk. Up. Actually, here is he's super Robert, humble. Rob, Robert going to help you out a little bit with this. You're going to take Victor Webbing on his height, and you're going to take Jose Altuve's clutchness, and you're going to be the greatest NBA player of all time. There you go. Ooh. There you go. You're going to take the clutch. The, the or post- baseball se- player. You could be like or, Joe. Or just, Je- you could be Aaron Judge bet- better. Or you're going to take his height, but Jose Altuve's postseason performance. Your Not team is going to win the postseason. He was okay Black there in 2020. He, he wasn't bad. Can't. I mean, he still. By the way, what, please three bombs. Was side note: Please don't off it, shots in the NBA. Please don't refer to the Rangers as champions because I was out of the country when they won the championship. So I do not acknowledge any teams that won when I was not in the country. So it does not count to me. That is not. I will not honor that championship. Can we all take a second to laugh at that parade? It's pretty stupid, right? That was the bucket ass them. parade. Fuck of them. All Nobody time. fucking likes them. They don't have fans. They don't have fans. No, They're fucking fake we, ass fans. They're not fans. We had fucking double decker buses with 10 million people. They were just riding around in the back of fucking Tacomas. They didn't get a cool hat video where the guy dropped his hat from the top of the parking garage and then everybody tossed it one level at a time all Bro. the way up and everybody chanted him on the whole time. Like that was absolutely fucking electric and the answers on even my team, but I was like, that fucking walks. The the one that sealed it for me was when somebody mapped it out and goes, guys, their parade is basically like if we just did a lap around Katie Mills Mall. Yeah. That was, was their fucking parade? That was your parade? On a... I mean, obviously, Dallas is a little bit wary of having guys riding around in open trucks. Which, by the way, why'd you have them Good in open call. trucks? Why'd you yeah. have them in open trucks? Yeah, they didn't have the president there. They didn't have Biden there. I got flagged on that one. Didn't have the buzz. Uh, didn't have the balls to run through Dealey Plaza, did they? Dude, that Gym was the pussies. Fucking that pussies. was the bunkest ass parade of all. I've never seen a World Series parade that was, was that it, bad. Was it fitting though? I mean, it's like, what did you th- what did you expect? You, you spent like eight hundred million. The, the Aces, Las Vegas Aces, had a better championship parade than you did, and I'm not trying to continue the WNBA slander that we had on the Patrick McLeod episode. Apparently, one person was not happy with that, but just one. Bro, just one person. It, like I was I, like, I have a WNBA fantasy team. Duh. You, I Ally. guarantee you, if the Dallas Stars won the NHL championship, they'd have a better parade. The fact that a hockey team would have a better parade in Texas than your baseball team is fucking crazy to me. That was the worst Anyways, parade they're not of all the, They're not the champions, though. They're not the champions. I was in Mexico. Doesn't no, count. no, no. They are. They are. They won it. No, 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 no. Not to me. Not, wasn't in. I, wasn't in the states. Wasn't I'm not in the states. Whoever Mexico's it? baseball champions are, that's my champion. No, they, hey, they won it. I'm not happy about it. I'm nope. not going to celebrate it. Me. I'm not going to give them props. They won it fair and square. I just love the fans. They're like, dude, imagine how much better we're going to be next year with Grom back. <laughs> yeah, for two weeks. You're going to have the two week All Star again. Paracos de Puebla is my, uh, they're, they're my champions this year. Paracos de Puebla. <laughs> shout, shout out to them. What does that mean? Is that, is that an animal? Is there a mascot in there? Is that just uh, Paracos know. de Puebla? All right. I think, I don't know. Paracos. That was a good episode back, boys. That was, dude. I was pretty yoked for this episode. Par- parquets? Parakeets. Oh, parakeets. the parakeets? Fuck yeah. The Puebla parakeets? Let's go. Dude, that's how bad Way you suck as a Rangers. franchise that the parakeets were more hyped than the Texas Fucking. Rangers. Can I you buy have a, a name hat? that embodies the fucking state and everyone was like yeah we don't care 
because you're in Dallas and you're you're a shit fucking fan base. You can't even show up Dude, to a the fucking parakeets parade. have sick hats. Bro, I left yeah. work in jeans and sweated yeah. my ass off for six and a half fucking hours to celebrate the Astros. And all of Dallas was like, oh, we can't be bothered. We can't be bothered to go enjoy mm-hmm. our fucking... Mm-hmm. The fact We're going to go they, kill JK. They JK knew again. no one was going to come, so they just drove like a three-mile fucking thing in the back of trucks. Every one well, of the greatest fucking championship Pussies. parades of all time. People were in double decker buses, throwing beers to people. People were throwing beers to them, and the Rangers were just rolling around like the Queen of England. Hi, hi, let me quietly wave at you. Hi, thank you for coming out. None of them even seemed drunk. How can you yeah. not get drunk at your own fucking parade? Rangers aren't the champions because I wasn't in the country when they won and the Cowboys win doesn't count this weekend because they're playing a third string quarterback. So I also will not acknowledge that. So please don't come at me, anybody. Um, that will we'll end the podcast on a, on a big fuck Dallas again, which is on brand for us. But um, I thought this was a fun episode back. Good job, fellas. It was good talk. It was good chopping it up with you guys. I know you guys didn't really miss an episode if you're listening or watching, but like it's been a minute since I saw the boys. So, uh, Maybe maybe we're gonna see some uh some streaming over the weekend. I'll show you guys my soup lineup for the weekend too. I'll be living off of soup. And then um fuck Dallas. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week, a great weekend. Be good to one another. Until we talk to y'all next time. Pass the gravy, you bitches. Gravy gang gang gang. Baby, pop the top and let it spread As we're listening to Pastor Grave We're going fishing for your bitch today We're drunk in Houston, eh? And we go ahead and lick him